from Omega Products International in Corona, California, right next to the 15 freeway. That's where you go to Vegas or you want to go to Temecula. Either way, you want to put on a show. Thompson Boxing, in its 22nd year of business, continues to put on the show. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be around the world on the Thompson Boxing YouTube or Facebook page. I'm Beth Duran alongside the editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, Doug Fisher and the president of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. When Rich Arata shows up, you know you have a good car. How are you feeling, Rich? All right, I feel great. And it's surprisingly comfortable out here tonight, which will make it better for the fighters and the fans. Yeah, we're outdoors at Mega Products International. Thompson Boxing comes out here. It's a party, it's an atmosphere. It's standing room only, sold out for two weeks. And Doug, one of the reasons being the main event tonight, Ruben Ace Torres, undefeated, knockout power, well, this kid just continues to get better. This kid delivers every time he steps between these ropes. Every time we see him, he gets better. That's why this is this is his second time headlining here in Corona underneath the stars. Um, the fact that he's fighting in a 10 rounder in the main event against a dangerous opponent, that all means something. It means he's he's a senior in high school. It means he's ready to graduate. It means if, if he shows out and he shines tonight, he will move on to bigger platforms. We hate to see him go. He will shed a tear. <laughs> but he'll move on to bigger platforms, start fighting names, become a, a legitimate contender, and maybe one day vie for a world title the way other graduates uh, of Thompson Boxing have, most recently, Danny Ramon. Yeah. And that'll be the main event. Ruben Ace Torres taking on a fighter and Cristian Baez from Venezuela. So saludos to la gente que está mirando en Venezuela. Rich. The Thompson Boxing, you remember when it started 22 years ago when Mr. Ken Thompson, Alex Campanola said, we're going to do something at a hotel. It continues to grow, but most importantly, it develops young fighters. We're going to see six fights tonight, but I love when you're here, Rich, because you always find those nuggets where I'm like, huh, I wish I would have thought about that. What do you have for us tonight, Rich? Well, you know, in, in looking at the fights as was the set up for tonight and looking at the records, as you always do when you prepare, I noticed a, really a couple of interesting threads that kind of run through our main event, our co-feature, and our chief supporting bout, those top three fights. The records of the fighters in each of these are almost exactly identical. Yeah. You have an 18 and 0 against an 18 and 1. Yeah. You have an 11 and 0 against an 11 and 1. You have a 10 and 0 against a 9 0 and 1. Uh, altogether, those add up to an unbelievable, a startling 77 2 and 2 <laughs> in our top three fights tonight. But I thought the most impressive thread oh, of all. Oh, wait, there's more. They <laughs> have. Yes, the most impressive thread of all was not numbers. To me, and talking to the six fighters or reading from the six fighters what they had to say about these fights tonight, every one of them, all six of them said the same thing. This is the toughest challenge I've ever had. Ooh. This is the biggest fight I've ever had. I need this fight. I need this win to get to whatever it is for those particular fighters. Six good fights, great nuggets from Rich Murata, the president of Meta Boxing Hall of Fame. Doug Fisher, editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine. If you know this, you've been with us. We know there's fights going on on Showtime. We know there's fights going on in Saudi Arabia, whatever it is. It's a busy <laughs> car tonight. We know there's fights on top rank. We enjoy it here at Thompson Boxing. We know we want to interact with you. This is the only show that's going to interact with you. So this is your show. Hang out with us. And the program looks good right here. It's called Path to Glory. Ruben Ace Torres on that path to glory. He's the main event. But tonight, let's get going with a couple of local fighters. Henry Ramirez from Riverside has three of them. Tonight, you see a lot of Henry. One of them I'm really excited for is Knuckle Nelson. I expect a couple of knockouts tonight. Should be a good show. Our ring announcer, I haven't seen him yet, but I always wonder, what is he wearing? His jacket's always smooth. Sonny Franco is in the ring, ready to bring in our first fight. guys thank you so much now i don't know about you guys but i would have to say that these shows are probably my favorite especially being outside i get a nice breeze up here on this very warm southern california night i've got a great view as you can see right behind me and the atmosphere and the environment is just unmatched tonight these are one of the best shows especially when we have them out here but let's get down to business first thing we're going to talk about is the thompson boxing app if you happen to be watching us on the app we thank you so much for downloading that one of the best things about it has gotta be that the app is absolutely free. So if you guys have been debating on getting that app, make sure you're heading to your app store on your phone, typing in Thompson Boxing, and of course it will come up. Now, not only do you get all of the latest news on all of our fighters, upcoming fights, but you can also watch the fights for free. So that means if you are in line at the grocery store for whatever reason, if you are at work right now, you could be watching us 
with the convenience of your phone. So make sure that you guys are downloading that app, Thompson Boxing. It is absolutely free. I promise you will not regret it. Now let's get down to business and let's talk about the fights that we've got tonight. Coming up a little bit later on, now we have Pedro Valencia and Adrian Corona. That fight, it is scheduled for eight rounds in the lightweight division. Pedro Valencia and Adrian Corona, both undefeated fighters. Valencia saying that this is his biggest fight to date. And yes, he knows who Corona is. He has seen him fight. The one thing that he has noticed that he has that Corona doesn't is power. And he says that is going to be all the difference in tonight's fight. Now, Corona saying his opponent, yeah, he's tough. He's undefeated for a reason, but I'm crafty. I have heart. And you know what? If he's underestimating me, he is in big trouble tonight. So that is going to be later on tonight. Eight rounds in the lightweight division. Coming up in the co-main event. This is going to be a fun one. Louis Lopez is going to be here fighting at home in front of his home crowd. He says this is an absolute dream come true for him. It has given him a different motivation. He's trained even harder for this fight because he does not want to let his fans down. And of course, he's fighting against Elias Diaz. He says that he hopes to give him his first loss tonight. Now, Elias Diaz, he's got a record of 11 and 0. Six of those wins coming by way of knockout. And he says that tonight, he wants to win those rounds early on so that way he gets Louis Lopez into a hole, gets him into trouble, and keeps him there. Now, we've seen Louis Lopez get into trouble on our shows here before. We've also seen him get out of trouble, so we'll see how he reacts to that adversity tonight in front of his home crowd in Corona, California. Moving on, though, to the main event. I know that the comments have got to be going crazy for this guy. Ruben Ace Torres will be facing Christian Baez. That is the main event, 10 rounds in the lightweight division. Now, Ace is saying that he is starting to feel those expectations that everybody has for him, his family, his friends, his team, the media. But he says, I don't want to just be a good fighter. I want to be a great fighter. And, of course, he says that Baez has been inactive for quite some time, but that's what makes him a dangerous fighter. Not only is Baez itching to get in the ring, but he is looking for a win and he is looking for respect. So A says he's a dangerous fighter, but he is planning on coming out on top tonight. Now, Christian Baez has not seen action since December of 2019. He says his experience is what's going to get him out on top tonight. He says he's sparred guys that are bigger, that are better than Ace, and Ace is going to have to bring his absolute best tonight, but he does not see this fight going the distance. So that is our main event scheduled for 10 rounds in the lightweight division. Great night of fights coming up for you guys, but of course the action is getting ready to start on deck right now. We do have Anthony Saldivar and Antonio Duarte, but before we get to those guys, let's take a look back at the weigh-in. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Thompson Boxing Promotions, I'd like to welcome you to the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Corona, California, where tonight Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present the Path to Glory. Ladies and gentlemen, these fighters have trained hard. They've trained hard to be here, and you pay to see them laid all on the line right here inside the ring. So with that being said, there's only one question left to ask, and that is, Corona, California, are you ready? <laughs> well, let's get the action on the road. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome out of the red corner from Baja California, Tijuana, Mexico, here is Antonio El Tigre Duarte. Antonio El Tigre Duarte, Tijuana, California, making the walk to the ring. The Tiger. He's got six fights under his belt. And he's going to be at a severe height disadvantage here tonight. 
Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Should be a good one. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be. Thirty-five years old. It's tough at that point to try to make a living for yourself as a as a pro fighter. Especially when you're facing young and hungry kids. That's the voice of Rich Murata. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be. His opponent as he makes his way to the ring under the blue corner from Ontario, California. Here is Anthony AJ Sullivan. Do you there recognize it, is. it? Do you recognize the oh, music? You know what? I don't need a Shazam because this is all for uh, Doug Fisher. Come on, man. This is the theme song from The Warriors. <laughs> from 1980, one of my favorite films. I love it. Makes me want to run and jump over stuff. Anthony Saldivan. AJ is his nickname. Hoping he'll have better luck than the earlier AJ today. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be it. Anthony Joshua, who came up short against Alexander Usyk. It was a good fight, though. Yeah, it was good, fun. It good was effort. Fun. Good craft and effort from both heavyweights. Looking forward to what we see from these middleweights. But I got to tell you, I'm partial to, to this AJ because of this uh, walk-in music. I've never heard the theme song from the Warriors play <laughs> as walk-in Of music. all the years working? I'm, I'm telling you, it works. Kudos. Kudos to this kid. All right, Sergeant Franco. Once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, fight fans, joining us around the world on ThompsonBoxing.com. We're coming to you from the Omega Products Outdoor International Outdoor Arena in Corona, California, where tonight, Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present The Path to Glory. We begin tonight's event with the first bout of the evening, scheduled for four rounds of action in the middleweight division. Sponsored by Triple A Stone, Makita, Rule the Outdoors, and Omega Products International. Your three judges ringside, should the bout go the distance, are Fernando Villarreal, Raul Kais Sr., and Ron Scott Stevens. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Daniel Sandoval. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He steps on the ring tonight with the black trunks with gold. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 159.6 already pounds. As a professional, his record stands. Two victories against four defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros de Baja California, Tijuana, Mexico. Introducing Antonio El Tigre Duarte. And introducing his opponent, fighting across the ring out of the blue corner. He steps on the ring tonight wearing the white trunks with gold and black. When he steps onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 159.9 solid pounds. Tonight, he enters the ring undefeated. One win with zero losses. That victory coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Ontario, California, please welcome Anthony A.J. Sullivan. Once again, your referee in charge, Daniel, to give the final instructions. I want a clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch them up. Let's go to war. All right, let's look at how these middleweights match up. Saldivar, of course, 14 years younger at age 21. He has extreme height advantage as well as a reach advantage. We get ready to go. Our opening bout here at Thompson Boxing. The southpaw in white is Anthony Saldivar. Antonio Duarte also has an MMA background, and you'll see his style. He once fought on a Bellator card. Here at 35, he'll swing and he'll chuck, Rich. 
It's yeah. uh, no fear with that man. None at all. And he's come out uh, wailing away to try to take away those uh, obvious physical disadvantages that he is under tonight. A lot of the two and four. He fought Richard Brewer before. Also, Avatar Soul Bustos. He actually fought Brewer twice. So, and his last fight got knocked out by a young man we're going to see later on the night, Nelson Oliva. But it's rare to see Duarte stopped. Yes. Oliva is a, real, is a really good puncher. Um, Duarte is difficult to, to stop, not just because he's tough, but also because he's unorthodox. Very unorthodox. You see the way that he lunges in that MMA background. But Saldivar, Henry Ramirez, his trainer, Rain Cross Boxing, excellent trainer here in Southern California, is really high on Saldivar because, as Richie was saying, he doesn't really fight like a, a fighter with only one pro fight. Well, he's got a nice little style that you can that you can see right off. He's rangy, gets around the ring pretty well. Nice jab that he that uh, he he utilizes. He won his first fight in a quick fashion, a one round KO. And he's got the the body I kind of favor for uh, good punchers and the pros. You know that long, lithe body, thin arms where a lot of power gets generated. They uh, both weighed 159, and as a young fighter. Makes his way up the ranks. It's good to give him the different wrinkles, the different things that you're going to look at as now the Duarte turns orthodox. He's tried Southpaw for a little bit and was getting tagged. Yeah, Duarte's shown him about five different things so far here in the first round. I like what I see from the young man, not just in terms of his, his technique, and he's got nice technique for a, a tall Southpaw, um, but I like his temperament. He doesn't get flustered. He didn't get stressed out when Duarte rushed him at the opening bell. And he's, he's very settled, he's relaxed, he's not, he's not loading up on his punches, he's controlling the distance. Um, and he, when he misses a punch, he doesn't get discouraged, he doesn't get frustrated. Calivera Elada to everybody in Greece watching us. There's gonna be a Greek fighter later on. Team Manu will be the co-feature, so if you're watching us, you gotta wait a while. He's going to be our fifth bout of the night, the Greek fighter. Right now, you're watching Anthony Saldivar in his second pro fight in the white. Box, 10 seconds. Keenan Wright, the timekeeper tonight. Thompson building materials in orange, Fontana, Lamita, Camarillo, San Diego, Ripon, and Sacramento. There we are in the IE, right where the 91 and the 15 freeways unite. And one of the rare times where the freeway keeps on moving. It has to be <laughs> after eight o'clock on a Saturday. Uh, Mr. Ken Thompson building uh, his building empire. Beautiful facility, great place to watch a fight on a summer after evening. Got a good vibe. Saldivar getting his uh, instructions from Henry Ramirez, who may as well not even leave the ring tonight between fights. <laughs> Henry has Louis Lopez next, and he'll also have Knuckle Nelson Oliva in the third bout, fourth bout tonight. The signing paper on YouTube, good comments so far, coming strong with the comments there. Uh, this is very interesting, though. It's, a, it's an interesting test for Saldivar because of the fact that Duarte's showing him so many looks, some of them crazy, some of them very unorthodox. Right, know? which and means he's, he's hard to predict. Which and means that, he's not a boxer. Right, that can, be diff that can be difficult for a young and inexperienced fighter, but I, I see a lot of um, prof you know, mature professional wrinkles from Sal Saldivar. He's, um, he, he knows how to tie up. Um, he knows how to to have some variation with that fast jab. You know, sometimes it's a range fighter, sometimes it's, it's, it's stiff. Um, sometimes he uses that that southpaw jab to just to deflect the the roundhouse punches that Duarte's launching. At. There's a shot landed by Saldivar. As Duarte comes back and just looks swinging wild. Duarte landed a nice right hand there. He did indeed, and the thing is. Uh, Doug and Beto, is it, when you're a young fighter coming up, you get sparring in the ring, but you'll face mostly orthodox fighters. You'll face, Correct. You get, and so you're not likely to see what's coming at him 
right now. Yeah, again, I, I like the way Saldivar uh, took that punch. And I know Duarte's not a huge puncher, but a lot of young guys would just get flustered. They would feel like they, they need to, you know, drop a five punch combination back on them. And they, they can fall into traps doing that. And Saldivar is keeping his composure, but he's also scoring with, with uh, nice punches, especially with his left. And as we've said many times, this is way better than getting a 15 second knockout for Instagram. <laughs> getting some work as you progress in your career. Yeah, because, you know, matchmakers will like to, if they really want to develop you, they'll try to match you against different styles, say in five straight different fights. You may fight a left-hander, a right-hander, a brawler, a boxer, a swarmer, a mauler. Well, he's seen them all so far here in two rounds. You don't have to go five, five fights. Rich Murata bringing the thesaurus here to Corona on a Saturday night. <laughs> Professor Rich, love it. Coming up next will be Elias Diaz against Louis Lopez. Fighter from Corona in his backyard. Salibar, bouncing around. Smooth, stays in the southpaw stance. Final seconds of the second round. Salivar controlling this fight in his second pro fight. Because Antonio Duarte was very game from Tijuana. Beth Duran, Doug Fisher, and the president of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, Rich Morado. You had a big event coming up, Rich. Absolutely. Coming up August 26th, 27th in Las Vegas. The we like to call it Boxing's Glamour event, the annual Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame induction weekend. Biggest names in the sport will gather at Resorts World to celebrate the accomplishments of the last three years worth of inductees and honor them up close and personal. Such names as Floyd Mayweather, Roy Jones Jr., James Tony, Andre Ward, Michael Nunn, Julian Jackson, Miguel Cotto, Jose Luis Castillo, they're all coming wow. from their various countries and states. They're all gonna be there. They'll be inducted into the Nevada Hall. Tickets are available for a full two days of activities at nvbhof.com. Or you can go to Twitter, find Boxing Rich for all the details, great event. It's a who's who showing up at Resort World in Las Vegas, the final weekend of August. That'd be awesome. Actually, you saw Michael Nunn at the Jaime Harin Golf Tournament. Had a nice, <laughs> he wasn't golfing, he was just hanging out. Yeah. And Michael's just, getting around. He's he's quite a talker, too. Oh, it, it was great, it was great, because I didn't want to talk about baseball. I saw Michael Nunn, I'm, I'll talk to you, Michael. <laughs> Telling me good stories, and uh, it was awesome to hear those stories. He's one of my favorite fighters growing up, and you guys saw him grow up literally. That's right, yeah. When he came out to, to Southern California in 1984, uh, right when the Olympics were, he didn't quite make the Olympics. He lost in right. the Olympic finals to uh, Virgil Hill. Correct. But uh, I remember Dan Goosen at the time told me, well, uh, he doesn't get Olympic gold, but we got the diamond. Absolutely. Oh. Real diamond. What a talent he was. Duarte trying to rough up Salivar Duarte, the fighter from Tijuana, who's two and four. Lands a right, connects, and he stays right on the shoulder of Salivar. He's not going anywhere. We said it. Duarte is a tough out. Yeah, this is a good effort from the journeyman, and he's scoring to the body. He's getting some of those uh, those haymakers in. And Saldivar right now, he's not controlling the distance. So he's got. Whenever uh, Duarte gets in close like that, he needs to land something to get some respect. Thompson Boxing developing fighters for the last 22 years, one of them being Giovanni Santillan, who wins on the top ranked card in San Diego, fight that just wrapped up. He sweeps the cards 190 twice and then 96, 94. So congratulations to Giovanni Santillan fighting in his backyard of San Diego. Yeah, he's coming along nicely. He might get a title shot. Co-promotion with top rank. Stays undefeated. He's one of those guys where the first time, or first couple times I saw him on a Thompson boxing card, I'm like, okay, well, he's all right. <laughs> he's, you know, he's, he's got a low ceiling, and now, you know, he's he's at least knocking on the door at, at, at being a legitimate top ten welterweight contender. Definitely ranked in the uh, among the sanctioning bodies, um, but every time I've seen him. 
um, you know, fight on ESPN on that, that top ranked platform, he's impressed me. Yeah, he's the ceiling is getting a little, little higher more. each yeah. time, isn't no, it? No, he, he, he just broke through it. Broke through that. Yeah, and I, and I think it came with a, a change of trainers. Yep, he's out with Robert Garcia now. Yeah. He used to be all the time in his backyard of San Diego. Taking that next step. Beautiful evening in Corona, California. Third round winding down, Anthony Saldivar. Controlling the fight, but he's got to work for it. He does because he's got a doggedly determined <laughs> opponent in front of him. He was getting a little fatigued, as you can see yeah. by those wild swings. Our first bout of the night underway. Stanley Rumoli and Corona coming up next. It is going to be Ioannis Manulidis from Greece, Athens, Greece, taking on Edgar Palacios. That'll be our next fight. So, good morning to everybody watching us in Athens, Greece. Team Manu. And that right there is Anthony Saldivar. His second pro fight. Across the way, by the way, uh, across the ring, I was taking a look at uh, Duarte as he came back to his corner. Totally exhausted. He, he was completely gassed. Yeah. He laid over the top rope and sat there in, in that pose for like 10 seconds. Yeah, that's the pose that an old fighter strikes after the final bell. <laughs> he's got another round, man. I hope he's got something well, left. He's got the MMA background. Usually they go three rounds in his style. So. That's true. Oh, here you know what? Four. He had a good round three, though. Yes, I actually he did. scored it for him. He's interesting. He's going to make it difficult for you. That's why it's impressive what Nelson Oliva did for his career when he knocked out Duarte in their last fight. Because Salomon is landing some shots here. First question I asked Duarte yesterday, are you related to Frankie Duarte by any chance? <laughs> the 1980s and 90s... Uh, Bantamweight in uh, Southern California. You've yeah. heard of him, but the, he the look? no, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, I'm not uh, related. We're just coming history at the fighter meeting. Good, educate these young men. <laughs> Me being one of them. Thank you for watching, wherever you may be. Whether you're watching on the Thompson YouTube page, or if you're watching uh, on the Thompson Facebook page. Saldivar's well, got a, a, a nice style. It's hard to be impressive when you fight somebody that's so unorthodox. It seems like Saldivar has, has figured out the, the herky-jerky style. He's, he's really dialed in and zero in on Duarte in this final round. Six fights total. And we might be here a while. <laughs> we better not. <laughs> yeah, fans like knockouts. Especially on a Saturday night when there's three different beer stations along line. Right. <laughs> it's a cool setup here in Corona at Omega Products. Food truck set up. Oh, yeah. It's, it smells great. Yeah. We have been out here outdoors on some hot nights, yeah. really hot nights. You know, up in Sacramento, too. We did a couple of those fights up there. Nothing like Sacramento in the summer at 108. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And go. Uh, we're going up to Sacramento in October. Hopefully it goes down. October 8th to be exact. Oh, uppercut landed by Salivar. Very nice. As Duarte was coming in, opening himself up, and Salivar taking advantage. So they were still trying to pinpoint his punches, you know, which I like that. Yeah, he's got some things to work on. Um, he's kind of straight up. He needs to work on um, protecting his chin when he lets his hands go, tucking his chin, moving his head a little bit more. But um, I like what I see. Yeah, he did have a good amateur career. He achieved the number six uh, amateur yep. ranking actually nationally at one point. So he's got some uh, he's got some schooling behind him, and he's grounded a little bit. You know, you're watching other fights. It's okay. Talk about it in the chat. Uh, the PBC show on Showtime: Omar Figueroa against Sergey Lipinets. That's a good. That's a good matchup. That's a good one. Also, the top ranked show: Benado is fighting. Navarrete. All right, yeah, Navarrete is fighting um, one of those twins. Yeah. Oh, a big shot at the end. Four good rounds. And you know, a lot of respect to Antonio Duarte. Yes. 35-year-old veteran from Tijuana gave it his all against a young, tough Anthony Saldivar. 
four rounds, and Rich, most importantly, he gets an opportunity to get some tape, and we'll get your thoughts after this commercial break here in Corona. Experience the world's largest compatible cordless system. Makita's LXT batteries take you from power tools to outdoor power equipment. The blower delivers power comparable to a 24cc gas model. From the job site to your home, reach speeds of 116 miles per hour. Use Makita's cordless products anytime, anywhere. One system, endless possibilities. Now get two extra free batteries. Paving the way to your personal sanctuary that you simply can't stop thinking about. Find yours at bellguard.com. Live from the Hustler Casino in Gardena, California. Watch the most well-known local and international poker players take the stage and go all in. From low stakes to high stakes, the action will be wild. Tune in to Hustler Casino Live, streaming five days a week on YouTube. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing to the judges' scorecards, we go. We have a unanimous decision. All three judges, Fernando Villarreal and Ross Khan sees it both sees about 40 to 36, while Raul Kaye Sr. sees it 39-37 in favor of your winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated from Ontario, California, Anthony A.J. Saldiva. Uh, congratulations to Anthony Saldiva at his second pro fight. And he gets the victory. He sweeps the cards, Rich Morano. What'd you like about this young man? Well, there's something there. I I, I think there's something there. This is pretty good. He's uh, he was serious business in there. He had a guy coming at him from all angles, you know, and he didn't know what to expect from one second to the next. But he dealt with it. He dealt with it nice. As we mentioned, he's got some good technique in there. So I liked it. And some kudos go to the others. I'll throw some flowers to Orte's way uh, too, because he came here and he gave the fans a good show. That was a nice fight. Good fight to watch. Yeah, and he gave the kids some work. The kid got got some rounds. Um, I like his technique. I like a tall southpaw. We were talking about Michael Nunn. Michael Nunn was a super talent. This kid, you know, he's got talent, but I, I, I think, you know, to move to the next level, he's just gonna have to get that experience and, and just add layers to his game. He still, still has that amateur style a little bit, but he's working on it. He's definitely working with, on it. Good hands with Henry Ramirez. He's now 2-0. and For more on tonight, let's go to the fourth member of our crew, the one and only Jessica Rosales. All right, guys, fight number one for the night is in the books. But you know what? We got more fights coming up tonight and more fights coming up later on in September and October. And we're going to tell you all about those now. The next one coming up will be on.
September 9th. That's going to be on Pro Box TV. We will have Miguel Madueño headlining that one out of Tampa, Florida. So make sure you guys write your calendars. Do whatever it is that you need to do so that way you do not forget that date. After that September 9th show, we do have September 23rd. So circle it, set a, an alert, whatever it is that you have to do. Do not miss it because that will be live from Ontario. Of course, you know we love to have those fights there. It is locked and loaded featuring Richard Brewer as the main event. And then to start out October, October 8th, we've got New Blood Sacramento. We'll be making all our way up to North Northern California. The main event there is going to be Eros Correa. So three fights to look forward to coming up in the next two months. But this is a really cool part. I know that you guys are joining in on the conversation on YouTube. Betho is shouting you out. He's keeping his eye on those comments on Facebook. But if you're watching us on social media or if you want to post any photos to stay in the loop in that conversation, make sure that you guys are using the hashtag Thompson Boxing. So whatever comment that you guys want to say, make sure to use that hashtag Thompson Boxing. So that way we do see it. We will be shouting you out. We will be answering your questions, maybe even saying back what your comments are. Whatever it is, we do want to hear from you throughout the night again that is hashtag Thompson boxing if you guys are on social media and of course keep that conversation going on YouTube on Facebook whatever it is however it is that you're watching us and especially if you are on that Thompson boxing free app now one of the cool things about my spot where I am over here is I get to see the fighters as they are walking out making their way to the ring walk right now we do have the Greek assassin and of course Edgar Palacios they are on deck and they're ready to go Here we go, Fight Pals. Let's get the action going once again. Please welcome out of the red corner from La Paz, Baja California, Mexico. Here is Edgar Palacios. Ed Edgar Palacios, ready to make the ring walk. Young man who's three and one. Edgar Palacios Cruz, to be exact. Tall fighter, six foot. Wait, uh, 142 to come in. Yeah, there was a, a little bit of difference, and Doug will do this. Uh, you'll see it uh, in a few moments in the tail of the tape. But again, some uh, physical disparity between these two fighters for this next fight. I like that. I like that we'll, you know, we'll see the, uh, the undefeated kid get tested against somebody who's not just more experienced than him, but somebody brings a nice record to the ring, um, but also some, some physical advantages. And now please welcome his opponent as he makes his way to the ring out of the blue corner. Ladies and gentlemen from Claremont, California, by way of Athens, Greece, here is Yanis, the Greek assassin, Manuel Elidis. Nice, ah, nice on, choice, <laughs> nice choice of walking <laughs> music, all right. He gets points, he gets points. Making his Thompson boxing debut. Team Manu, as they say it. We've got hey. another Giannis uh, Greek freak exactly. here. Exactly, <laughs> that's exactly who he is. Uh, how do you spell it? It's spelled I-O-A-N-N-I-S. Uh, he made his pro debut on the Sugar Ray Leonard's charity event at the Beverly Hilton back in March. So that's uh, one way to do it. He looks very nice there, very nice smile. Look at that uh, choir boy face. And uh, But his, the description that I got from about him was tough as nails. Well, the Greek assassin is his nickname. All right, so we like it. Two songs, I mean, two fights, two songs with The Rock. So Doug, Doug Fisher's all happy about it. Is Sonny Franco happy though? Is he happy? Let's find out. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, continuing on with the next bout of the evening, scheduled for four rounds of action in the Super Light Division, sponsored by Westlake Royal Stone Solutions, Thompson Building Materials, Infinity Bank, K-Town 88, and Delicious Eats in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Your three judges ringside, should the bout go the distance are Fernando Villarreal, Raul Caiz Sr., and Ron Scott Stevens. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, uh, Thomas uh, Taylor. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighting under the red corner. He steps to the ring tonight with a sword trunks with blue. When he stepped onto the scale, he went in officially at 142.6 ready pounds. As a professional, he has four fights to his credit, including three victories against one defeat. One of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, Novas y Caballeros, please welcome from La Paz, Baja California, Mexico, here is Edgar Palacio. And introducing his opponent, but across the ring under the blue corner. He steps to the ring side with the white trunks with gold. When he steps onto the scale, he went officially at 138.4 solid pounds. Tonight, he enters the ring undefeated. A one win with zero losses. Ladies and gentlemen, join us tonight from Claremont, California by way of Athens, Greece. And for all of his fans back home in Athens, Greece, Kitties, K Kitty, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your niece, the Greek assassin, Manuelides. Once again, your referee in charge, Thomas Taylor, give the final instructions. Hey, coach, coach, belt's a little high here, so I'm gonna give him to the top of the leg. Belt's good here. You got my instructions in the back. Dude. This is my man, touch him up. Back to you. Excellent veteran referee Tom Taylor giving the instructions to tell the tape, Doug Fisher. Yeah, these junior welterweights, they're both young. They have equal reach, and the big advantage goes to Palacios, four inches in height. Athens, Greece, and you heard Sonny Franco using his Greek. All right, here's the bad pun. It's all Greek to me, Rich Morata. <laughs> And Giannis expects to make quick work, lands a big right immediately. Body work upstairs quickly. The young man is not wasting time. It's breakfast time in Athens, Greece, and they're enjoying their fighter immediately letting his hands go. Yeah, that's a good tactic from Manuelides. Just close the distance as soon as possible and set the tone for the bout. I like the body attack. And he knew that there would be a lot of people watching uh, this fight in Greece. And he did the weigh-in himself on, in on his Instagram yesterday. That's the way to do it, baby. Instagram Live, you go and do it. Uh, he has a following. He showed up three years ago to train in Southern California. Then uh, right a little thing called COVID hit, and he had to go back. And here he is. He's been here for three months. He's learning English. There's a couple words, a couple phrases. <laughs> Yeah, but it doesn't matter what language you speak when you sit down on your punches like that. Yeah, he doubled up on that left hook real nice. Body and hit. Overhand right from Giannis. Edgar Palacios is the second time fighting on a Thompson show. In April, he came up short to Pedro Valencia, undefeated fighter who we will see later on tonight. That was a good fight. Yes, it was. If memory serves me, he scored an early knockdown. Yes, he did, Doug. So he is dangerous with that left hand, but he's got to establish the distance. He gets power at the end of his punches. I think he's settling down here a little, Doug, because I think uh, Giannis uh, kind of uh, surprised him with that initial yeah. attack in the opening seconds. Now they're going, letting their, both fighters letting the hands go. This is a good matchup. Palacios is gonna have to be good on the counter. Wow. In the corner, body shot going upstairs, his team Manu. You know, Manu has, he's, he's got very good timing and he's economical with his punches. You like to see that in somebody who has a reputation for being a puncher or being a sharp puncher. Well, he likes to punch, you can tell that. And his favorite fighters, he listed Arturo Gatti and Teofimo Lopez. Oh, so goodness. you can see what kind of <laughs> yeah. a style that he sure. appreciates. Explosive. How old is this kid? He's dropping Arturo Gatti on you? Very nice. Yeah. 
can't go wrong with that, being a fan of Gotti, but those no. are big shoes to fill if you're an actual prize fighter. Mona. That dude spilled a lot of blood. Yeah, you might want to watch a fighter <laughs> with some defense. Yes, exactly. Oh, Great for man. the fan. I love the body attack. Uh, in his second pro fight, we're seeing body work from the Greek fighter, Giannis. Making use of feints. Nice jab. A very well-timed right hand. That he, he's beating the southpaw to the punch, to the power punch. Uh-oh. 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 We told Another you about the one. counter that he needed to be yeah. good on the counter, and that's exactly what happened. Maybe yeah. Palacio stole that round. I don't know. Just enough. Could it be? And you said it, Doug. Got to be careful. And Giannis, K-Town 88. The flavors of Korean and Mexican fused together. Delicioso Eats. Hey, Rancho Cucamonga. Sounds good. Yes, it does. Oh, that's just a beautiful shot right now. Great overhead shot by the crew. You see it? Standing room only. Replays from the first round brought to you by Hustle Casino. It was good action, a really crisp first round. And there's that counter punch we told you about. It was a straight left hand, nicely done by Palacios. Yeah, and that happened just before the bell. But prior to this moment, it was all Manuelitas. I don't think that that last, you asked the question, Doug, I don't think that'll be enough for him to steal the round. I agree with you. <laughs> well, at least on my very unofficial <laughs> scorecard, I scored it. But for, it was a big shot. The Greek, yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, deciding paper says, what's up with Palacios being unable to finish hurt prospects? Was he hurt? He was off balance. It was a good punch. But it, it, it was indicative of this matchup. This is a, 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 an even matchup on paper. Our second bout of the night here. This fight scheduled for four rounds. The main event being Ruben Torres and Cristian Baez. Toda la gente que nos está mirando en Venezuela. A veces la pelea estelar. Six fights total coming your way. Thank you for watching. Thanks for the comments. We do see him. We'd love to interact with you. Giannis doesn't have a home gym. Like, what do you guys do? Like, well, we go to Robert Garcia's. We go to Henry Ramirez, which is how they connected with Thompson Boxing. Well, they said he got great sparring. He's sparring with everybody. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Well, between those two gyms, yeah. there's a lot of work, especially for this weight class. Yeah, with RGBA, I don't think, like, well, Robert was in Saudi Arabia today. Pita's in San Diego with half of his team. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's always some action going on there at that compound. It's great work for anybody. Doesn't look like a fighter who's only in his second pro fight. Giannis. Yeah, I agree. I like that. I like the development of him. And Edgar Palacios coming from Baja, California. You know, there's always a huge step up when you leave. Mexico and you come to the United States as he found out against Pedro Valencia but Alex Campanovo matchmaker for Thompson Boxing saw something in him and it's the way you lose too the, the battle the resistance that you have that brings you back yeah I, I think both young men have a lot of confidence they're, they're confident in their style um, right. and their their ability um, I would say right now uh, Manuel is he's making his presence felt more well, you couldn't get too big of a, a much uh, more of a disparity in style between between two fighters, but they both like their own style and they're sticking to it. Thirty seconds ago in the second round, schedule number four. Manuel Lidas has done a good job of uh, cutting off the ring. Um, you can tell he's still learning. You know, it's, but he's he, he's he's closing the ground, and, and when he's in range, he's landing the much harder punches. Stacks ringside, Anthony Saldana. Appreciate the tweet from you. Uh, Corona, watching tonight. He said, "I'll see you next week at the Resort World Las Vegas for the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame induction." All right. May there are B square. Yep. <laughs> Gail Lynn Falkenthal, PR Pro San Diego, watching as always. Hey, Gail. She says, Omega is back, baby. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Our next fight, Agent Corona, getting the boots laced up. Actually, no, that's our fourth fight of the night. 
That's Adrian Crowley. He's on 0 1. His opponent, Pedro Valencia, who's also undefeated. That's going to be a good matchup at 135 pounds. That might, that might be the fight of the night. I can't call that one. Oh, and if, uh, you go to my Twitter, Duran Sports, you'll see the picture I posted of myself and Doug Fisher and a Super Bowl ring worn by one Rich Parada. <laughs> and the beings are coming in Raiders. Yeah. What ring are you wearing, Rich? I got the uh, 1984 Super Bowl ring here. I was a Raiders radio announcer in those days. and. Uh, Al Davis was nice enough to award myself and Bill King, my partner, uh, wow. with Super Bowl rings after that uh, fantastic season here in Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Raiders. That's awesome. I'm asking a stupid question. I know fighters get their belt and they keep they keep it. You know, if they lose it, they give it ceremoniously, right. but they keep it. Do they get rings? Like, can you order a ring, like for the WBC or I WBC guess? sometimes gives out rings. Well, they also usually, give out a bunch of belts too. Yeah, that's usually reserved for the for the Halls of Fame. Also, you get a Hall of Fame ring? Well, no, when you get in the Hall of Fame, you get a ring. Oh, right? okay. Um, but a lot of the state Hall of Fames also uh, oh, okay. award a ring. So if you go to obviously, if you go to Canada, Minnesota, they give you. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That's awesome. And it looks like Rich's rings. They're, they're big, I, man. I wore the <laughs> Hall of Fame ring here tonight. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Good action here in the third round as Palacios and the Greek assassin are going back and forth. Yeah, Palacios has stepped up his offense a little bit. I, I think that's a smart thing. He needs to get some respect. Manu Alitas looked a little bit the fatigue between rounds. I was looking at him in the corner. I, I agree with you. I, I can see it a little bit in his body language, and, and that's because he loads up with every punch. Yeah, he spent a lot of energy in those first two he rounds. He did. He's going to have to learn how to relax a little bit. I mean, I like his energy. I like his aggression. I like his confidence, but um, boxing is, is, is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yeah, he's only 5'8", so he's never he's not going to have a height advantage over most guys that he, that he ever fights, so he's going to have to learn how to uh, get close to his opponents. Yeah, he's going to have to he's going to have to work a little bit harder. He's going to have to have the footwork and he's going to have to have the work rate to um, to overcome that 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 height disadvantage, the size disadvantage, which means he ha he ha his his he has to work on his stamina because he has to have confidence um, in his endurance. And he's also going to have to learn um, how to relax during a fight because that adds to a fighter's endurance, obviously. Yeah, the more we go, we're seeing taller fighters within the context of their own weight divisions now all the time. Huh. Ray Vargas. That's killing yeah. yeah. Ray Six Vargas. Foot 122. Come on. Sebastian Fondora. Oh my god. That's Come crazy. Yeah. That's the librarian coming Forget at about you. It. Yeah. He can great. do your taxes and then knock you out. Yeah, great guy by the way. Yes, yeah. he is. He and his sister. The whole Fondora yes. family. Class. That's yeah, a and busy fun, Saturday of boxing. Love it. Fundora's his head coach, Ben Lira, is going to be in the corner of uh, Adrian Corona. So we're going to see him. I love it. And uh, you know, I'm talking about Ben Lira, 81 years old. Love soaking up the knowledge of Doug. You had a, a dinner yesterday or lunch? Yeah, you know, well, that was about? amazing. I'm seated with, uh, you know, the sports writers that a lot of people in Southern California grew up reading. And it, was a, it was a real honor. Oh, the mouth wow. comes out. That was a right hand, and that's and then the mouthpiece. you got to protect Palacios. yourself at all times. Yeah, right. The Greeks' mouthpiece goes out. Palacios jumped on it. The, the two of them wow. both stopped, and Palacios actually missed an opportunity. And I'm going to give you something here. So I was in the back. Talking to Palacios, trying to get some more notes on him. Tom Taylor came over to give him instructions. There was nobody that speaks English. So I translated for Palacios, and one of the things that Tom Taylor emphasized, as Nelson Davila and Water Reyes are next, was that if the mouthpiece goes out, keep fighting. And I said that to Palacios, and he looked at me, and Tom said again, mouthpiece goes out, I'll pick it up when the action stops. And Tom said it twice, keep fighting. So Palacios understood my translation, because he jumped on the ground. Yeah, those are the rules. Uh, the referee is not supposed to step in until there's a break in the action. To do otherwise is to put the puncher at a disadvantage. The, the fighter who landed the punch that dislodged the mouthpiece, it puts them at a disadvantage. It would stem, it would, it would stunt their the momentum that they had. They both stopped, actually. They did. And I think Palacios was about to hit, but he saw that Giannis had stopped. Right. So he, st so he, he should have let his there. hands go. Yeah, you're right. Fourth and final round, a tight back and forth action between Giannis Manu, Manu Ilidis 
And Edgar Palacio, the South Pawn Silver. I thought Palacios handled it well. He, yep. he got he got caught with a good right hand. The mouthpiece came out. Yeah, they both paused, but then they, they did resume the action. And I thought Palacios um, held his own at the bell. This doesn't look like a fighter who's 1-0 in the Greek and a fighter who's 3-1 in the Mexican. It looks like some veteran savvy fighters. Yeah, they, they, they have good technique. And they have a lot of poise. They have a lot of confidence. Oh, look at the updates. CX Luis and Lucy saying Navarrete is getting exposed on the Tamp Rank Ooh. Show. But you know, Paez brings it. Yes, we, he does. We've seen both of those uh, those twins fight. Those yes, guys, we have. They always bring it. Mexicali, they'll come out. Right. Mexicali, yep. Oh, wait a minute. Lucy, it's a knockout? Who won that fight? So Navarrete wins by a knockout. Okay. <laughs> Navarrete is a beast. That's all. I'm looking at the comments on YouTube. You know, we've seen two real action prelims here yes. tonight. You know, two four rounders with these, the combatants in both fights and really it, brought it. It's to be expected. Yep. That's a. That's it. That's how Thompson boxing shows generally start out. Lucy, we appreciate the update. Navarrete knocked out Baez with a body shot. Smart. This is what happens in 2022. We could be live at a fight, interact with you on YouTube as you're watching two, three different shows, wherever you may be. We love it. And, you know, we're not shy about admitting that we're watching other fights too. We're, we're for the fight fan. We're here with you. If you're watching this, we appreciate you. You're, your dedication to Thompson Boxing is his 22nd year of business developing young fighters with less than a minute to go in the fourth and final round. Hey, and when they're not developing young fighters, they're just putting on good fights. Exactly. This is it's just a fun. good fight, yeah. Standing room only crowd here in Corona, California. Yeah, and you know, I said we might be here for a while, and that may be the fact, but who cares? With this kind of action, I'm, yeah, I'm it goes for it. Now, that'll be great. They don't <laughs> stop beer sales, I think. <laughs> I'm impressed with Manuel Edis. He's, yep. he's got an engine. I'm impressed with Palacio. He's, yeah, he's I, very gay. Both of them, yeah. He doesn't He doesn't wilt. That's a deceiving three and one. Both the fighters, young fighters, a lot of, a lot of room to grow. Final seconds of the fight. How come I have a feeling I, there's a draw coming? I think manually only four pulled rounds. It out. Yeah, but it's it, only four rounds. Yeah. Some of the bigger Could shots. Be. And Palacios puts his hands up like he thinks he won. The Greek fighter goes back, doesn't raise his hands. That was really excellent action. We'll be back with the decision here at Thompson Boxing in Corona Saturday night. this table, you know that it's more than a game of luck.
You're not here for the small talk. You're here for the action. If you're at this table, you're a hustler. Hustler Casino. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing action, we have a split decision. Here are your judges' totals. Fernando Virel sees it 39-37 for Yanis Manu Eldiris. Judge Raul Case Sr. sees it 39-37 for Palacios. And Ron Scott Stevens sees it 40 to 36 in favor of your winner by split decision from Athens, Greece, Yannis, the Greek assassin, Manuel Lidi. Ah, split decision. I can see that with yep. that clash of styles. Yep. I, I understand it. And I, I understand Ron Scott Stevens' shutout card. Yep. I, I, I had the same card. Every, all four rounds, I thought, were close. I just thought that that uh, the Greek had the, just a slight edge in each round. I, I had it three rounds to one for the Greek assassin yeah. myself. But what happens when you have the disparity of styles, yeah. depending upon what a judge kind of likes or sees, right. he might score, there might be a wide disparity in the scores, and I think that's how that happened. Totally. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was saying at the end of the fight. I was like, I could see a draw. Just because yeah. the styles, and you mentioned the disparities, sure. and only four rounds. But Nike for Yanis Manu Elis, Team Manu from Athens, Greece. It's his second victory. Edgar Palacios falls at three and two. And uh, his team wasn't exactly too happy about that. And I can feel they come in. Understandable. Not, yeah. They, understandable. Beth Duran, Doug Fisher, the editor in chief of Ring Magazine, and the president of Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. Rich Murata here with you in Corona, California. So two fights done in the books. Coming up next, Nelson Oliva, Eduardo Reyes, Adrian Corona, Pedro Valencia, Luis Lopez, Elias Diaz, Ruben Torres, and Christian Baez. It's a standing room only sold out crowd here at the Omega Products International in Corona, California. The ring girls are going to be throwing out Shirts to the crowd. So if you've never been to a Thompson show, get out here. It's a good vibe, good energy. This is usually the part of the night when everybody in the crowd goes temporarily insane. <laughs> well, that's okay. For a free shirt. Sure. <laughs> right, ain't nothing wrong with getting a free shirt. What's wrong is beating up little kids for the free shirt. <laughs> We're going to have to work on some of those throws there. Free caps, too. <laughs> oh, we got hats, too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, we got merch? Oh! oh. We got some cool merch. <laughs> we got some swag. <laughs> Beto, to his yeah. credit, caught a free hat and gave it to someone in the crowd. We're tossing it. See, I wouldn't do that. I would stuff it in my backpack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, now Sonny Franklin's going to throw. Can Sonny throw? Sonny, do not throw out your rotator. <laughs> no, don't do it, Sonny. That's a rotator. Our insurance oh, doesn't cover. Oh, look at Sonny. Wow. Our insurance isn't that good, Sonny. Boxing insurance is good. Ring announcer insurance, not good. <laughs> All right, is Amaris going to throw this? Come on, Amaris. Amaris V with the chunk. All right, all right, all right. Good job, Amaris. All right, so some free swag for people after the second fight. Gloria Stefan. Yeah. I like the musical choice during this uh, little interlude. Interlude here. Did you ever see Gloria in the sound machine? Uh, uh, I have not, but I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to uh, join the conga line here. If you're ready. <laughs> uh, our next fight is Knuckle Nelson Oliva. He sat down with the Thompson Boxing Cameras.
fans, let's get the action going once again. Please welcome out of the red corner from Tamaulipas, Mexico. Here is Eduardo Dinamita Reyes. There he is, a veteran of 27 fights. Eduardo Reyes, always a tough out. He comes to battle. He, co he brings it every single time. He's ready to make his ring walk. Tamaulipas, which is right underneath of Texas, right on the Gulf of Mexico. Okay. Matamoros is a city in Tamaulipas, and they're in the Little League World Series right now. So here he is coming in, a um, veteran fighter. This song that he's walking into, what's the name of this song? It's Vicente Fernandez. Oh, yeah. So this That's is like the classic. This yeah, is, this is a... It, this has been played like every, you know, like a hundred thousand times, <laughs> you know, over the the, the yeah. past fifty years or whatever. And only at the backyard weddings too. Yes, <laughs> we haven't even included the quinceañeras. <laughs> well, the Chavez ring walks were always oh. my favorite. Oh yeah. Did you work a lot of Chavez fights? Yes, and with with the full mariachi. Oh. And the, oh yeah. The well, Chavez flags waving everywhere. Chavez actually had Vicente Fernandez sing for him <laughs> on a ring sure. walk. That's like having Sinatra do your ring right now. Please welcome his <laughs> opponent as he makes his way to the ring out of the blue corner from Fontana, California. Here is Knuckle Nussin Oliva. Ah, a little house of pain for Knuckle Nelson Oliva. Nice choice. I like this kid. He's got he's got a lot of talent. He has an exciting style. Um, and, and icing on the cake, he's got a great personality. He's yep. really good on camera and in interviews. 3-0, three, right. oh, three KOs. He's also a member of the Carpenters Union. His shirt good. says Sin Frenos, no breaks. Do you think House of Pain is like the most played song <laughs> at sports events? I, it's played a lot. That one in, uh, especially in the Boston area. The, oh, without a doubt in the Boston area, or also the uh, the Black Eyed Peas. I got a feeling that's made oh, a strong yeah. run yeah. in the NBA circle for you a know, while. You know, they play House of Pain, uh, but the band plays at University of Wisconsin halftime. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, along with this, yeah, and the whole stadium is jumping up and down. We could do a show just on rewalks. Good. <laughs> Tony Franco. Well, ladies and gentlemen, continuing on with the next bout of the evening. Scheduled for six rounds of action in the Super Middleweight Division. Sponsored by Protovost, Norman Denberg, and Ta, Western Manufacturing, Bellegarde, and Thompson Building Materials. At ringside, your three judges scoring the bout should it go the distance are Fernando Villarreal, Raul Kais Sr., and Ron Scott Stevens. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Daniel Sandoval. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He steps to the ring tonight wearing the colors of Mexico. When he steps onto the scale, he weighing officially at 162.4 already pounds. As a professional, his record stands. 10 victories against 17 defeats. Six of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, de Tamaulipas, Mexico, introducing Eduardo Dinamito Reyes. And introducing his opponent, button across the ring out of the blue corner. He steps to the ring sign with the blue trunks with white. When he steps onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 162.7 solid pounds. Tonight, he enters the ring undefeated. Three wins with zero losses. All three of his victories come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Fontana, California, please welcome Knuckle Nelson Oliva. Once again, your reverend in charge, Daniel Sandoval, to give the final instructions. Well, these stats are obviously going to favor the younger man, Nelson Oliva. He's the younger man at 26. He's three inches taller, and he has the decided reach advantage. And you saw from the two of them there, the body style is completely uh, different between the two. 
And I must say that Reyes looks a little soft around the middle. <laughs> well, a little I'm thinking puffy. he's not really a super middleweight. You know, maybe if he was in better shape, maybe he could be a, a super welterweight. And right immediately, and wow! Reyes is just coming out the swing because he, he's, he's got three, four different weight classes above where he normally fights. But he got those shots in. Yeah. I can't believe he landed that. Okay, then Nelson's got to watch himself. You were saying fights were going to go distance. Not this one, Rich. I'm, I'm expecting Knuckle Nelson to come in and let his hands go. 3-0, three, three knockouts, two of those knockouts being in the first round. He comes in, doesn't mess around. Mentioned he's a construction worker. He has been pouring concrete this week. He's working in Indio, 10 p.m., no, I mean midnight to 10 a.m. Oh, boy. He's helping build a new sewer system in Indio, California. He's part of the contractor union. So he's literally doing road work at night. Wow. Real world. Just goes straight work. to the gym, takes a brief rest, and then drives back to Indio. Uh, he had two days off this week. The union man, he's working. So Yeah, he's a, he's a blue-collar yep. professional. So, I mean, you know, to... To do what he's doing right now in the ring, that takes an uncommon amount of, uh, of dedication yep. to but the he sport. Comes in and he works. He's Guatemalan and El Salvador. Those are his roots. So he's got little flags on his trunks. And he comes in and loads up. Edward Reyes is just going to try to wing it and try to do something competitive. If you got to work full time. Get an office job if you're going to be a fighter. <laughs> hey, hey, come on. But uh, as Henry was saying, this is a kid because he's pouring concrete, because he's doing that carpenter work, his hands are so strong. He's got you know, Joe Smith, for right. example. But Joe isn't working every day. I mean, we know that he's out there taking pictures. <laughs> but he worked his way up, and that's he what he did at one doing. time, right? But yeah. this is what the beauty of Thompson Boxing does. You develop these young fighters. And many of them have that blue collar attitude behind them. And he come oh, in. Low, oh, low, that low was there. low. That was in Tamaulipas. Oh, oh right oh. back to him. <laughs> That's the veteran Eduardo Reyes. You, you hit me with one, I'm going to hit you with one, too. Referee didn't say nothing. And, and you know, Sutton Nelson didn't even uh, flesh. He didn't uh, complain about it. No. He knew he had done one. <laughs> now, I will give credit to... Reyes, he doesn't get stopped. He, he's lost eight of his last nine, but he's gone the distance with then young fighters. Of those eight losses, seven of them were undefeated. Yeah, and uh, he's giving Oliva a, a poker face. He's not showing any sort of pain or, or distress. Yeah, he's not intimidated. Yeah, he's he's he's, calm, he's in cool there to fight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's got a big nickname to live up to, Dinamita. Oh, you know. Beth Durant, Doug Fisher, and the president of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, Rich Murata. Rich, what's going on in Vegas? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. A gala celebration of the sport of boxing, and that's going to be next week in Las Vegas, and you fans can be part of it. It's the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame induction weekend at the Resorts World on the Vegas Strip. Friday afternoon, a meet and greet for fans with the, all the legends and champs and inductees. Friday night, big party. The fans are able for the first time to purchase tickets and attend Saturday morning on amateur boxing cards, Saturday night, the induction dinner. For tickets and ticket information, you can go to the website of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. That's nvbhof.com. And a great time is guaranteed. Uh, great job. Make sure you follow Rich on Twitter at Boxing Rich. And if you're interacting with us, make sure you use the hashtag Thompson Boxing. Jessica Rosales is checking out that hashtag. We're going to get your picture. Post a picture where you're watching from, and we'll get that on the broadcast. Now, Doug, does the name Eduardo Reyes sound familiar to you? It does. Because between 2016 and 2018, you and I called a bunch of his fights. <laughs> he fought Golden Boy Prospects, Everton Lopez, Genaro Gomez, okay. Hector Tanahara, <laughs> yeah. Eric Lopez, Oscar Duarte. Yes. Led one Bartholomew, Manny Robles. <laughs> we saw him all the time. I'm we having him. flashbacks right <laughs> <Yes>. now. <laughs> Maybe he looked different. In those oh, he things. did. He, he was did. a little more trim, yes. <laughs> the first time we saw him at the StubHub Center, he was 130 pounds. Yep. Andre Bertel, Victor Ortiz was the main card. Oh, wow. Uh, and then when we saw him against Tanahara back in 2017, actually, uh, Hinato Gomez in 2017, um, <laughs> 
That was oh, Ray Vargas wow. and Ronnie Rios and dropped them. That was quite a knockdown. Yep. But he fought at 26 and 30, 35. Tonight he's at 62. So he knows how to take a punch. He's taking punches tonight, though, from bigger guys than he was taking punches in those days. Yes. A lot more powerful. And Oliva is getting uh, some warnings from the referee for um, pushing late him down. Hits. Yeah. yeah, pushing. Yeah. Oh, they're going to take a point away. I think so, because I think he hit him oh. while he was down. Yeah. So while he was down, Oliva. But that's borderline, because Oliva saw a fighter who wasn't all the way down. Right. Hey, learning experience for young Knuckle Nelson Oliva. And Reyes will benefit from the extra seconds there. He got at least a double count, basically triple count. Oh, and Oliva comes back, lands a big left hook. That oh. dropped him. Oh, he's on his face. Wow, a big shot from Nelson Oliva here in the second round. And it's over. A second round KO for Knuckle Nelson Oliva. He's 4-0, all of them by a KO. Kid is explosive. He's explosive and he's accurate with his punches. Got some warnings, you know, tonight for some, you know, low blows, some late hits and that kind of thing. So he, he does have to learn how to, to you know, to rein it in just a little bit, but he's got he's got serious physical tools. He's, and he's got some heavy hands. And I think it's really interesting that he listed his favorite fighters as Pernell Whitaker <laughs> Stop and it. Terrence okay. Crawford. All right. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't exactly emulate their style in the ring, but no. you know, I like what he showed here tonight. So do I. More Knuckle Nelson highlights coming to you. Thompson Boxing in Corona, California on a Saturday night. Makita's cordless outdoor power equipment. The mower is a part of the world's largest battery system and cuts non-stop for up to two miles. The self-propelled model makes mowing effortless. Get unstoppable power without the hassles of gas. Reach speeds of up to 116 miles per hour with the single battery blower. One system, endless possibilities. Now get two extra free batteries. Live from the Hustler Casino in Gardena, California. Watch the most well-known local and international poker players take the stage and go all in. From low stakes to high stakes, the action will be wild. Tune in to Hustler Casino Live, streaming five days a week on YouTube. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the end comes. One minute, 30 se 38 seconds of round number two. Referee Daniel Sandoval puts the contest, stop this contest, declaring your winner by way of knockout and still undefeated from Fontana, California, Knuckle Nussin Oliva. Hey, you see the guns right there, Rich Murata. Gun show coming out from Oliva. And yeah. one of the comments came out uh, right here from Lucy. 
Uh, favorite fighter? He might want to add Terry Norris to that mix. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's right. He's yeah. more like Terry Norris. Yeah. He has Terry Norris's temperament. Because when Norris got a guy hurt, he finished him. Norris could punch, Yeah, no doubt. This, this guy's intriguing, you know, and I, it always catches my attention when I see 4-0 and and 4 KOs. And as you can see, this was a real KO. This guy could definitely punch, and he just loaded up with everything when he had the opportunity, and it was proved to be a good finisher. Oh, and he's now 4-0, 4 and 0, 4 KO, Doug. We've seen all of them. Poise is one way I would say to describe him. You know he's getting the quick knockouts. He waits for him. Yeah, he's he's interesting because he's he's calm during the attack. He's an explosive fighter, but he doesn't lose his head. And uh, I love the way um, he attacks the body. He, he, he never neglects the body. And if you saw Reyes during the count, Reyes knew he was not going to get up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Re Reyes was totally he conscious. He made the effort to get knew, on his knee. He knew everything he's an old was pro. going on and everything. Yeah. And he, was just, he was just not going to get up. Well, yeah. well, he knew he, it, he was overmatched. You know, uh, one of the comments from Lucy, Manny Robles vanished after the shoe can fight. Now, I'll tell you this, Lucy, Manny Robles III, during that fight, he was battling vertigo. Oh. Um, afterwards, they did a neural scan with him, and I know Manny really well. They said it wasn't worth it for him to continue as a pro fighter because he would have these headaches and dizzy spells. Oh, yeah. So now he's working with his father, Manny, as a trainer at their gym there Good. in South Gate. So Manny is following in the family business. He, he also got his carpenter union card. So he's working that and doing a bunch of other stuff. So good for oh. him. Good for him. Yep. All right, now if you're looking for Knuckle Nelson, he, he will be interviewed by Jessica Rosales. He's working his way over there. Uh, let's go to Jessica Rosales, who has more on tonight's card. All right, guys, we just saw Knuckle Nelson Oliva walk by us back here. He's with the doctor right now, so hopefully in just a bit we'll be able to grab him for an interview. But first, we have a couple of quick updates for you. For those of you who have kept your eye on all the fights that have been happening today, we have an update from San Diego. Giovanni Santian had his fight there in front of his home crowd. He ends up going the distance against Julio Luna comes out on top with the unanimous decision win. He has now improved his record to 30 and 0. Now, for those of you that follow Michael Dutchover on social media, you guys might know that he made a pretty big announcement this week. The West Texas Warrior has decided that after 16 years and a record of 16 and 3, that he will be closing the chapter on boxing in his life right now. Now, he does want to continue to keep the sport in his life and wants to take all the things that he's learned and teach them to other people. He will be a coach at his former amateur boxing gym in his hometown of Midland, Texas. So we just want to say, Michael Dutchover, we wish you the absolute best in life. And just remember that your Thompson boxing family is always in your corner and always has your back. So wishing the absolute best to Michael Dutchover. And as we said, we do have some very exciting fights coming up in the next couple of months. So we're just going to take you guys through those very quickly, starting out with September on September 9th. Miguel Madueño, he will be fighting out of Tampa, Florida. Then coming up on the 23rd, we have Live from Ontario, Locked and Loaded, featuring Richard Brewer in the main event. And then on October 8th, we'll be heading up to Northern California to Sacramento with our main event, Eros Correa. So those are the next three fights that we've got coming up. That is our schedule through October. And of course, we got some other fights coming. And if you're watching us right now, we do have a special guest that is joining us here at the desk right now, Knuckle Nelson Oliva. And here is the thing. I like what you're doing with your record. Four fights, four KOs. I like where you're going with this. Tell us about tonight's fight, second round KO for Knuckle Nelson. Uh, you know, I always tell everyone the same thing. It's, it's never intentional. Uh, I never look for the knockout, but if it comes, it comes. And uh, when I noticed, uh, I guess I'm a fighter. Like, I, I, I thought I was more of a boxer, but when it gets high, it gets hot. So I just keep on throwing. And, and uh, I really noticed that this fight, I'm going to try to slow it down again. Uh, but it keeps on coming, so. And let him keep on, keep on coming. We're going to roll with it. And, of course, before you ended the fight tonight, it looked as though you got a point taken off. Tell us about your thoughts on that and what happened there. Um, so 
In my last fight, it, kind of the same scenario. Uh, he was down. His knees didn't touch the floor. Uh, I saw that. I noticed the same thing. His butt didn't touch the floor. His knees didn't touch the floor. So I thought it was a clean call, but the ref called it. It, it is what it is, and uh, I had him hurt. So uh, just the next couple punches were, were to put him out. It was almost like you were saying, well, then watch this instead, right? Yeah, uh, I did get a little frustrated. Uh, I, not, not that I ever do, but here, there comes a time when I do. <laughs> And of course for you, I mean, you've been getting these guys out pretty quickly in your fights. Are you hoping to go more rounds in the future or, you know, are you hoping to continue this knockout streak? Uh, I don't know. That's a tough one because, it, it, like I said, if it comes, it comes. And and then the fans like it. I like it. So more knockouts, more, more, uh, more rounds. It is what it is. It doesn't matter to me as long as I keep on fighting. So when it comes to the future plans for you, what have you decided is probably the next step? You know, uh, probably right back here in either in Ontario at the Doubletree or here in uh, Corona at the Mega Production Center. But uh, just keep on fighting. Keep on racking up those wins. Keep on racking up those wins and hopefully those knockouts as well. Yep, yep, yep. I appreciate it. Thank you for everyone for watching. Uh, my family, my my friends, my, my, every, my co-workers, everyone. I uh, appreciate it. You got coworkers tuning in tonight as well. What do you want to say to all them? Uh, thank you. Thank you again. I'll see you. I'll see you Sunday night because I have to work tomorrow night. <laughs> you got to work again tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night, ten-hour shift. Let's get it, baby. <laughs> I think that he deserves a night off after what you guys saw. That I'm trying to help you out here. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're trying. I gotta all get right. paid. <laughs> all right, sounds good, Nelson. Anything else you want to say before we let you head on out and we go off to those next fights? Nope. Thank you. Well, actually, one more thing before I let you go. We're actually showing you the replay. This is your first time getting to see that knockout in real time. So tell us about that. Take us through those moves. Yeah, uh, we were exchanging. I, I saw clear punches that I could land, and uh, I just took what I could, could get. So how does it feel getting to watch that back right now? Feels good. I wanted, I wanted a highlight reel. <laughs> Another one to add to the highlights. All right, Nelson, thank you so much. Nice talking to you again. Great job tonight. All right, guys, coming up next, we do have our next fight that is ready to go. We got a pair of undefeated fighters, Pedro Valencia, Adrian Corona, up next. Here we go, Fight Pass. Let's get the action going once again. Please welcome out of the red corner from Rialto, California. Here is Adrian Corona. He brings a crowd, 9 0 and 1. Adrian Corona. He's wearing all white. Got the legendary Ben Lira in his corner. Should be a good matchup tonight. And obviously being the son of a world-class referee, um, he has literally grown up in and around the sport of boxing. But don't gyms. sons of world-class referees usually become no, this referees? Is, this is rare. And um, <laughs> Where's the Cole family? Yeah, and Ray is, he, he, he gets nervous when his son oh, fights. I saw him earlier, how you doing Ray? He's like nervous as hell. Every fight, <laughs> but um, you know, with each bout, Adrian gets better and better. And I've, I, I've called a lot of his fights and he has developed into a, a real prospect um, and I love his style. He's an aggressive technician, and he usually raises his game when he's fighting a puncher. And now please welcome his opponent, making his way to the ring out of the blue corner from Pacoima, California. Here is Pedro Valencia. Pedro Valencia. Mentioned that Vicente Fernandez. There's more of it. No me cierra hard. Loosely translated, I don't back down. 
That's the right mindset, yep. and that is his mentality when he's in the ring. Pedro Valencia is a bull. And as he told you, Rich, he's the, he's the puncher in this matchup. All you got to do is yeah, look at their records. And he knows it. And I think, you know, Corona knows it. Yeah. 10 and out, seven KOs. The 818 representing Corona. I mean, uh, Valencia. Paquema. That's what I got to do my Richie. Richie Valens. <laughs> La Bamba reference. Young fighter, this is a good one. Good matchup. I'm really looking forward to the, these two know each other. Should be a good one in our fourth bout. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Thompson Boxing Promotions continues on with the next bout of the evening. Sponsored by Westlake Royal Stone Solutions, Infinity Bank, Makita Tools, and Hustler Casino Los Angeles. Los Angeles is only a luxury casino. Scheduled for eight rounds of action in the lightweight division. At ringside, your three judges scoring the bout should it go the distance are Fernando Viral, Raul Kai Sr., and Ron Scott Stevens. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Thomas Taylor. Right, fans, here we go. Introducing first, but none of the red corner. He stepped in the ring tonight with the white trunks with silver. When he stepped onto the scale, he went in officially at 134.5 solid pounds. Tonight, he enters the ring undefeated. Nine wins with zero losses with one bout even. Two of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Rialto, California, here is Adrian Corona. And introducing his opponent, fighting across the ring out of the blue. He steps to the ring tonight with the white trunks with the purple. When he steps onto the scale, he weighed officially at 134.5 pounds. As a professional, he too enters the ring tonight undefeated. 10 wins with zero losses. Seven of his victories come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from Pacoima, California, here is the hard-hitting Pedro Valencia. Once again, your referee Thomas Taylor give the final instructions. Hey guys, belt lines are good on both sides. You got my instructions in the back. Protect yourselves at all times. Listen to my commands. Touch them up. Oh, these young lightweights, they're basically the same. <laughs> <laughs> An identical physical matchup, same age, same height. The reach is virtually the same. The only difference is their fighting styles. It is, and it's kind of funny because the Corona says about Valencia, well, I know he has power, but I don't think much of his ring intelligence. And uh, Hey, them's fighting words. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and on the other side, Valencia said, yeah. He doesn't have enough punch to keep me off. So they all they recognize the their strengths and weaknesses of each other. I think they got the right attitude. And I tell you what, in the last Thompson Boxing show, these two got in the ring in their street clothes and they yep. stared down. And it was and there was heat. That was a real stare down. Incredible intensity. Yeah, normally Thompson Boxing doesn't have their opponents do their stare downs, but this one has been building up for a while. You see them coming back and forth. And great job by Kite Monroe, who runs the social media for uh, Thompson Boxing because the videos he, had, he would get from both of these fighters talking about it build up the eyeballs really looking forward to this one as it's scheduled for eight rounds our fourth bout of the night. Yeah this is the matchup I was looking forward to the most and this is the one where I really can't pick a winner. Yeah. Just flip a coin. And you're gonna hear the crowds go for them. Both of them sell tickets. Behind us is the Adrian Corona crowd. Opposite side is the Pedro Valencia crowd. You know, we mentioned the attitudes of the fighters in our top three fights here tonight and the, the, the camps that they've been through. And, and uh, Adrian Corona said, I have been pushed to the limit. I have never had a camp like this before. Yep. He's with Ben Lira, 81-year-old Sage Yoda. 
Uh, <laughs> South El Monte Teamsters Gym is where he's training with Ben. Yes, sir. And, uh, I believe in those sages. And oh, absolutely. And, uh, Me too. A lot. They bring a lot to the table. And if you're you're a fighter like like it, like when when Adrian Corona turned pro, he was still a teenager, and he had yet to grow into his man strength. He needed that. He needed that wisdom in the corner, and it, he needed to rely on technique, technique that he can fall back on now um, as he's grown into his man strength. The jab followed by a right hand from Valencia with the gold trim on his trunks. Valencia giving a different look, going southpaw, flicking that right hand. Is that a jab, kind of? Just wow. Paw? What is that? That uh, I'll tell you, that he's right jabbing him here and doing a good, very good job of it. But he's not turning it quite over, right? It's, it's just, just ping, ping, just ping. Just enough. Yeah. Right, giving him a different look here in the first round. Yeah, and Cor Corona's backed off since he's since he's done that. And a couple fights I've seen of Valencia, I haven't seen him do this. So, interesting look, a little wrinkle here in the opening round, scheduled for eight. Interesting and close first round. Yes. Coming up next, our co-main, that's team Louis Lopez. He went to high school, literally, down the street at Corona Centennial. He brings the crowd. He's 11, 1, and 1. He's taking on undefeated Elias Diaz. That's our co-feature. That's next. But right now, we're watching Pedro Valencia and Adrian Corona. That's the Valencia corner. Talking to their young fighter. There he is. Wearing the trademark newspaper boy hat. Back when Ben grew up reading newspapers. They, do ex they did exist at one point, I've heard. <laughs> You know, I was talking with Ben in the back, and you know, 81 on that. Ben, how, how much more can you do of this? He's not doing the mitts, but he's in there game planning, and there he is, the main trainer. He's like, I got another 30 years in me. Like, and he was Love dead it. serious. Oh, yeah. I, I shouldn't say dead, but he was serious. <laughs> yes. Because he said, I live a healthy life. He does. I'm in the gym every day. I, these kids keep me young, and they know there's no cutting quarters with me, whether it's Gennady Golovkin, whether it's Jojo Diaz. Whoever it is, whether it's Adrian Corona, it's like, you come with me, we are going to work. I just love to hear other people talk about Ben. The respect that, uh, that they have for him. Very reverential. As he said, you know, guys use me, they don't use me. They come back, they don't come back. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be in the gym every single day. First round, impossible to tell the way this fight is going to go. Yeah. Definitely a step up in competition for both fighters, which is good. At some point, Doug, you got to just say, hey, we got to challenge you. What do we got? Yeah, this is interesting. The southpaw turn from Valencia is interesting. He is kind of troubling Corona, but we're not seeing the power. From well, Valencia. he's not utilizing his left hand. Yeah, he I'm hasn't. If he heard it, uh, he, he has a great point, Rich. Oh, that's a good point. He's not throwing it at all, he's only throwing the right hand. Look at that. And he started a right there Hesitant. and held up. I think Valencia's injured his hand or arm or something. He's fighting on Instagram right now. That's a tough break if that's the case. I don't know if Adrian realizes that, though. He, he doesn't look real comfortable in the, in the southpaw stance, but he's somehow been effective in, in, throw, in throwing that jab. He's just throwing a lot of jabs. Okay, now, now he switches. He uses it. But he quickly goes back to southpaw. That's a great observation. You know, between rounds, I'm going to go to that corner and ask. He'll throw one, but he winced when he threw that punch, Rich. With well, Valencia. I've seen fighters who have hurt themselves and hurt their hands and, and say they at least have to show it once in a while. Right. But there's no intention behind it, right? Just to keep you honest? Right. And that's a good point, Doug. You're wondering if Corona knows that he's hurt. Yeah, because at the beginning of the round, Rich, I was just like, hey, what's he doing? He's not throwing a legit, serious jab. Like, he was just a poor flick. Meantime, Corona's keeping the business and, and landed a solid, clean blow. Yeah, I want to see more of uh, Corona's right hand. I'm 
we'll see if he can aim that to the body of Valencia. Especially when Valencia is in that southpaw stance. There we go, there it is. Twice. Okay. That can be the key to troubling Valencia when he's in that southpaw stance. Second round winding down. I'm going to go in that corner of Valencia, find out if he's hurt. There goes Beto. He is starting to throw it a little bit, though, Valencia. It was just a, it was a kind of an odd situation when they switched, when he switched around and he just started kind of pinballing that, uh, his, uh, a right jab. Yeah, and he hasn't been as aggressive since like maybe the, the first half of the opening round. By the way, Rich, how did you score the opening round? I, th I thought that Valencia had a slight edge. Okay. I scored it for, for Corona, but was, I might be a little biased. A, it yeah. was really a I, tough one to score. I noted that it was a close round, kind of like an either way round. I scored round two for Corona, though. Although Valencia boxed fairly effectively in spots. Well, let's see how he comes out as we begin round three. Scheduled for eight. Valencia now back in a an orthodox stance. And he goes to the jab. Maybe that arm or hand isn't hurt. I don't know. He might have done that strategically to make the switch. He just looked uncomfortable. And really, for a good 45 seconds or so, he did not throw any punches. Yeah, maybe there was something with his elbow and he kind of works it out. Seems to be punching freely right now, nice and fast. Not loading up. And that could be because there's something wrong with him or he just, you know, he respects his opponent, Adrian Corona. All right, so just came back from the corner of Pedro Valencia. The trainer tells me that he normally switches to southpaw. And that it's nothing new, but he was telling him in the corner, you got to go back to orthodox uh. and mix it up. I was like, has he said anything about the hand? The trainer said he hasn't complained about it, but it might be a possibility. Okay. <laughs> Cryptic. All right. Yeah, and I'm like, so have you asked him? He's like, no. <laughs> But because he don't said, ask, don't tell. He said policy. because switching southpaw <laughs> is something that they work on. Okay, so that's a that's a tactic that's just new to us. We're used yeah. to seeing um, Val Valencia being a pressure fighting power punch well, from the orthodox stance. Yep. Now so, he's punching with both hands. Yes, so and punching with authority. Yeah, nice and fast. Valencia really enjoying a good round here. Well, he's got a bite down on that mouthpiece here in the third. And we're seeing some of the, the defensive craft and technique from, from Adrian Corona. But Corona's going to have to answer back. Because it looks like uh, Valencia has assumed command of this bout here in round three. Also, Rich, sometimes when you are injured, uh, the pain kind of dulls, right? And you just deal with it. I mean, it doesn't stop hurting, but you just something you got to fight with, right? Yeah, but he is throwing it with power now, you know, which, like that one. Like, and it makes me think he's not uh, injured. It was just an odd-looking switch up, and he looked uncomfortable in it. Uh, regardless, we're still in a good scrap here between Absolutely. Valencia and Adrian Corona. Corona with the blue gloves. Blood from the nose of Corona. So not many punches thrown by Valencia, but when they do land, taking a toll. <laughs> like there's people this in the is... crowd giving advice, and he looked over like, yeah, yeah. he nodded, yeah. Well, you know, this is interesting. Um, we're seeing Pedro Valencia box effectively. He's Would a... that be the fight you were not expecting to see? I was not expecting that. I was expecting to see a lot of pressure and a lot of power punching. We're headed to the fourth round. See, they're not even addressing the hands. I guess maybe maybe we're doing something wrong here. <laughs> but regardless, though, it's a different strategy than what we expected. Uh, yeah. Yes. He didn't look bothered but at all by the hand in the corner, anyway. 
Now he looks poised. He looks like he's uh, he's relaxed. Frankly, I liked it from his standpoint and from the perspective of Valencia being effective when he did go on the offensive there and, it, yeah. and, he, and he unloaded. I thought it was better for him. Yeah, I think that's his natural style. He can box effectively, but he looks kind of awkward. Ana Gabriel, Gallo de Oro jamming. There we go, to the fourth round, scheduled for eight. Pedro Valencia, Adrian Corona coming up next, Luis Lopez, Elias Diaz, then the main event, Ruben Ace Torres and Christian Baez. Now Corona coming on the offensive to start this round. Yes, Corona has stepped up his aggression and he will do that. Dick, didn't you and I call his fight at the Tom Lawford's 360 show? Yes, we show? did, yeah. A fight that was in the at, draw, right? Yes, at the Avalon. At the Avalon in Hollywood. And I remember after that fight thinking, well, maybe the kid might hang it up. Maybe maybe his father will tell him, hey, listen, look, you've had your fun. You've experienced being a, a professional fighter, but this game isn't for you. Um, but we had to take into consideration, you know, he was like 18 or 19 years old at that time. He looks different tonight. Oh, yeah, he's grown a lot. He's grown physically, and he's matured a lot. And we also saw him on uh, St. Patrick's Day, the Quiet Cannon show. Oh, that's right. That's right. And yeah. he just dawned on me right and now. In Montebello. Yeah. And he fought well. Yeah. And he looks different. The grown up. And also, as fighters progress in their career, the dedication that they apply to the, the craft. Yeah, I think he's even more dedicated. Uh, and um, I think he's hitting harder, you know. He only has two knockouts. To his credit, but um, that's not indicative of, the, of, of what he's hitting with right now. He, he does have some power. He does have some pop. He, he's been known as a slow starter, and so this might actually be kind of the point where he's jumping off now and uh, enjoying a good round. Yeah, and he's been he's been battle tested. He's been in some really hard six round uh, bouts and uh, a, a couple eight round bouts against more experienced fighters that really put it on him. So I, I, I do expect him to, you know, to, to keep the, keep his tempo up and, and to fight hard over the second half of this fight. If we see those rounds. You know, Valencia said, you know, that I've got a fan friendly style and he wants to, his goal in coming out of this fight was that he can headline Thompson Boxing cards in the, in the future. I like his ambition. That's the right mindset. And they're going tit for tat. This is a competitive round. It, it seems like it, Corona has taken command, though. Or at least taken away the momentum that Valencia had yeah, in this coming round. out of the third round. Yeah. Round back and forth action between Malaysia and Corona. In Corona. Ah. Uh, Modelo. Uh, Deliveries here ringside. I know there's a Corona in the ring, but we're drinking Modelos here. Ah, uh, quality in the cups, quality in the <laughs> ring. There it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Standing room only crowd here, Corona. Please. California. Are you Mason in Southern California? If you are, you can win three thousand dollars. Join us here at Mega Products International Saturday, October first, for the Veneers Masters competition. For more information, please visit the merchandise table near the gate. Once again, you have a chance to win three thousand dollars. If you think we can get it, ask to be the best veneer mason in Southern California. October first on Saturday. We hope to see you here. Beth Duran, Doug Fisher, the editor in chief of Ring Magazine, and the president of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, legendary Rich Murata here at ringside on fourth bout of the evening. And Dougie, what's the new cover that just came out? Like on Twitter, people were oh, making yeah. some noise. Oh yeah, so yeah, it's the state of the game issue where we're, we're, we 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 do a review of um, all of the divisions in boxing, uh, and we choose like you know the matchmaker's dream in each division, and the matchmaker's dream for the lightweight division, obviously the two most popular lightweights, which is 
Javante Tank Davis and uh, King Ryan Garcia. Oh, and, and it's a fight everyone's talking about. It's a, it's a fight that uh, Garcia is um, actively lobbying for, and we'll see if the business of boxing will allow this fight to happen. I certainly hope so, because I think... Well, it would be big business, so why yeah. wouldn't the business allow it? You right, know? <laughs> that's, that's the point. It's a great stylistic matchup on paper. It's explosive. Both guys are in their prime. Both guys are boxer punchers, um, and, and they tap into different markets. It would be a huge fight. It's just the business. It would do great business, but it's the business of boxing that kind of keeps it keeps those fighters divided, unfortunately. Well, that's the line. It would do great business, but it's the business of boxing. <laughs> yeah, I wrote the cover story, as a matter of fact, and that, that's the, you know, the topic that we addressed. Good action back and forth here in the fifth. Yeah, nothing yeah. dividing these guys. You know, back and forth is the operative statement due to the fact that, you know, there, there are times when one guy seems to be establishing the style of the fight. For it goes for 30 or 45 seconds, yeah. but you can't sustain it. The other guy comes back and, and it looks like he's establishing. I like that. Yeah, the, the other fighter either makes adjustments or just pours on more effort. Overhand right landed by Pedro Valencia. And these are going to be difficult rounds to score. Yeah, so I'm going to pass on that and leave it up to Doug. <laughs> Yeah, while you were getting information uh, from the corner of Valencia Beto, I asked Rich how he scored the opening round, and he, he said he gave Valencia the edge, and, and I, I gave the edge to Corona, so it's that kind of fight. And I can see both. This, this round is hot. This is tit-for-tat stuff here, this fifth round. You see the growth of both fighters from where they started their pro career. This is the kind of matchmaking you get, Thompson Boxing. You can't give him baby food for too long. Gotta find out what you got. The left hook landed by Ray Corona's son, Adrian Corona. I think Valencia is more effective as a right-hander. He, he seems to be spending the majority of the time in the southpaw stance, but I think he's better off when he's right-handed. Yeah, if his hands are healthy, I think he, he should fight this fight orthodox. Five rounds in the books. Our main event tonight from Venezuela, Christian Baez. He's bringing that sporting attitude as he fights for the U.S. for the first time. And Ruben Ace Torres, the main event here tonight. I got to tell you a little story about Torres. My daughter watches these fights when I'm on. She's a real so she fan. Oh, see, she's a, she's she a fan of dad. dad. Okay. Right? She never talks to me about the fights. She never mentioned. Uh, a few months ago when I did a Ruben Torres fight, she called the next day and said, Dad, I really like that Ruben Torres. He is really good, isn't, isn't he? <laughs> so now here's someone who's not a boxing fan who clued into that. Hey, she recognizes real talent. And I'm jealous. My daughters never watch these broadcasts. <laughs> well, tell them to watch Ruben Torres. They have no interest in daddy. <laughs> hey, they deal with the comic book. That's enough. Yes. Pedro Valencia. And this is a shout out to the legendary Tim Boxale. Where did he start his career back in 2017? At the Escape Bar in Tijuana. Fought there a couple times. It wasn't no big punch. But he also did fight at Bar La Oficina, the office. The office. I was working his way. Now here he is uh, on a Thompson show. Adrian Corona, 9-0-1. He turned pro in 2018 at the Avalon in Hollywood, the fight that you were talking about, Doug Fisher. Yep, a lot of four-rounders at the Avalon. He always uh, put butts in the seat. Always gave an honest effort. What do they call it? Hollywood Fight Night? Hollywood Fight Nights, yes. Mr. Tom Loeffler's 360 promotions. Yeah, that was a good sh show with you, Seth Conte, uh, uh, Steve Kim. Flushy, flushy <laughs> Flash. Oh my gosh, yes, yeah. Kevin Kelly. Oh Kevin my goodness. Kelly on there. <laughs> Former featherweight champ. Never at a loss for words. <laughs> He's still going. Flushing, yes, he I'd like to see a battle between uh, the Flushing Flash and Michael Paul, Nunn. Or how about Paul Milanaggi? Get, <laughs> get, 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 get those. That guy can talk. 
Great energy. Yeah, and these guys are fighting. I tell you what, Valencia's fighting with, with some good energy right here. You said it, Rich, and I'm going to repeat it. He needs to be the aggressor. Yeah, come forward. No, no need to switch stances. You know, fight at, from the orthodox stance. He has power in both hands, regardless of the stance, but I think he lets combinations go better uh, from a right-handed stance. Approaching a minute to go in the sixth round. Valencia and Corona. We're gonna wait towards the main event of Ruben Torres and Christian Baez. Corona's at a power disadvantage here, so he's just gotta throw more punches. Exactly. He's gotta he has to be a it, volume puncher. He has to outwork Valencia. And it's not easy because Valencia's got a battery. When he wants to let his hands go, he, he can be a high volume puncher. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be on the Thompson Boxing YouTube page. Make sure you subscribe. Or on the Thompson Boxing Facebook page. I'm checking out the comments on the YouTube. Oh! Valencia is catching Corona with some hard shots here in the final 15 seconds. And Corona's backing off. Yeah, well, I, he may have been stung by some of those shots. Corona's got to protect his chin a little bit better. Ramblin' Ralph Velez checking in. Shout out to Dougie and Rich. Ramblin' Ralph, were you wearing sunglasses inside the other day? Is that what I saw <laughs> on social media? That a boy, looking good, Ramblin' Ralph. Excellent ring announcer in Arizona. All right, did uh, Figueroa lose? I think, I, I see that's coming up. And make sure you use the Thompson Boxing app. Android, iPhone, we got it all for you. So download the app, you get all the information, subscribe to the YouTube, subscribe to the Facebook, follow the social media account, do it all for you. The Evolution of Thompson Boxing is 22nd year. There's a wrestler babe. She was a wrestler in college. She's also wow. 5'11". Mars V, okay. showing up. Ring Girls are now sponsored by Hustler Casino where Ace Torres was playing some poker there the other night. I saw that. Well, I saw the video, but he played yeah. it earlier in the month. Who was that? A Ace Torres playing some poker. Really? Also, Ryan Garcia was playing poker against the pros. He tried to bluff win all in against a dude on a, like a $50,000 pot. You know who used to love that poker was Jerry Buss. Oh, oh of course. We used to play over at Hollywood Park, yeah. Oh, yeah. Doctor, well, you worked for him for foreign boxing. That's right. You know, it was Dr. Buzz who let, who basically gave me an opportunity to do pay-per-view for the first time. When Tommy Hearns was doing... Yeah, the, when the, he fought uh, Virgil Hill. Virgil Hill in Las Vegas. Right. They had a meeting, and of course the people, people were going, well, who are we going to get for the talent for the, uh, for the show? And it was Jerry Buss who said, let's give Rich a chance. Well, that's awesome. Awesome. See, well, Dr. Buss knows talent. He came up with the idea <laughs> of... He really does. Hey, we'll leave it there. <laughs> Did he come up with the idea of pay-per-view? No, oh, this for was that fight. You mean? Yeah, for that fight. It was. This is in the early days of pay-per-view because I think it was 1991. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't. I don't think it was long after uh, George Foreman fought uh, Evander Holyfield. That was like the first really big pay-per-view. TVKO with, uh, with uh, Freddie Pacheco and Al Bernstein that yeah. night was the fight doctor Freddie Pacheco. Yeah. But I watched that fight live um, uh, at a professor's house. Well. I think my, my last year of college, or my third year of college. G Funky Boxing in the 916 checking in. Appreciate you. Halfway through the seventh round, Valencia Corona, neither fighter separating. Corona's going to need to back Valencia up, and he's going to need to get some respect. He's going to need to land some um, punches that Valencia is going to take notice, but also the judges are going to take notice. Oh, our good friend Linus Esquire watching us 1 a.m. in Philadelphia. Oh, wow. Still going. He was watching Saudi Arabia. He was watching <laughs> I it. Florida. He was watching San Diego. And now he's watching Corona. That is a man. <laughs> and he's got an 8.45 tea time. Oh, my gosh. Gamer. Shout out to Linus Esquire. Also, the chat is checking in. Real Ernie Green on Twitter. Uh, what's up, Ernie? Scott's Arizona. Yeah, that's a good group right there. Yeah, it is. 
Oh, you called it tit for tat, and that's what we got to get. This is tit for tat. It really crazy. is. I like what I, I like the effort I'm seeing from Adrian. I'm not saying that he's swung momentum in his favor. I'm not saying that um, he's taking command of this fight, but he's answering a little bit. He's doing better than he did in the previous round. By the way, after six rounds, I had this fight even, 57-57. Corona, as he walked back to his corner, he gave a little shrug with his head like he was a little disappointed. Well, he's got to shrug that off. He's yeah. got one more round, and I think he needs to really, actually both guys really need to dig deep. They need to empty the tank in this eighth and final round. Because it's anybody's fight. It's, it's very close. These have been difficult to score rounds. I'll tell you one thing, Valencia does not switch back and forth right-handed to left-handed the way Terrence Crawford does, <laughs> which is the most few, seamless guy that I've ever do. seen. Right, I've never seen it. Switch from left to right, you no, can't even tell he's, he's doing he's it. He's better at it than, than Marvelous Hagler. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. It was like the original for me, like the OG switch hitter in boxing. Eighth and final round of action. Adrian Corona, he's got the blue gloves. Adrian Valencia, he's got the white gloves. They're both with an O on the record. Oh, they're, they're, this is they're doing one. it. Empty the tank and go. Yep. Both men are gonna try to close the show. Valencia was talking to the fans to the right side of his corner again, right before the round started. <laughs> I admire that kind of like, <laughs> Relaxation, you know, just to be able. Well, you know, Beto says this is the interactive. Uh, sure. <laughs> the card. <laughs> yeah, but not when you're in the ring. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to distract yourself, but I, I do think it's kind of cool when a fighter can. Man, Floyd Mayweather used to do oh. that. He used to talk to the commentators. But he was also controlling the fight. Like yes, he was. Business. Yeah. Floyd saw three punches coming at him at once. Well, can anyone take true command here? Very interesting how the judges score these rounds. Because nobody's really done anything to separate themselves during the round. You'll see one fighter control half of it, another one control the second half. Yeah, and I don't think I've seen either fighter hurt. No. No big shots have landed. Fight. Two young fighters putting it on the line. Our referee has had a pretty easy yeah. go of it in there tonight. Yeah, Tom Taylor. Yeah, one of the best in the clean. business. A minute to go in the fight. But I have loved and seen the growth of Pedro Valencia and also Adrian Corona from young fighters fighting their way at four rounders, willing to take on this fight. They both have spent a lot of energy in this fight. You can tell by neither man really launching a final assault. Yeah, it's all they can do just to, to hold their form. I like the way Adrian blocks shots on his with his gloves and his arms, but I wonder if that might cost him. If like some of these punches that, he, that he's blocking, one of the, the judges might think that he got caught. And that'll do it. Eight solid rounds between two young fighters putting on the line. Pedro Valencia, Asia Corona, respect to you. Close, close fight. 
Coming up next, Louis Lopez, Elias Diaz. Local fighter from Corona, Louis Lopez, Elias Diaz, will come back with the decision here, Corona. the world's largest compatible cordless system. Makita's LXT batteries take you from power tools to outdoor power equipment. The blower delivers power comparable to a 24cc gas model. From the job site to your home, reach speeds of 116 miles per hour. Use Makita's cordless products anytime, anywhere. One system, endless possibilities. Now get two extra free batteries. If you're at this table, you know that it's more than a game of luck. You're not here for the small talk. You're here for the action. If you're at this table, you're a hustler. Hustler Casino. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight exciting rounds of boxing action to the judges' score cards, we go. Fernando Viral sees it 79 to 73. Raul Caiz Sr. sees it 78 to 74. And Ron Scott season Stevens also sees about 79 73, all in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated from Pacoima, California, for Pedro Valencia. Pedro Valencia sweeps the cards. Veiling effort from Adrian Corona, who loses for the first time in his career. Valencia stays undefeated now, 11 and 0. There will be an interview with Valencia and Jessica Rosales coming up. Doug, I'm going to start with you. How did you see it before we get to the card? I saw a different fight. I thought it could I thought it was. Tit for tat, all, all eight rounds. It could have gone either way. Um, I had it 77-75 for Adrian Corona. I thought it could have been 77-75 for, for Pedro Valencia. I didn't think Valencia, Valencia was in that much control for like a, a 79-73 card. Yeah, that was maybe 70, maybe 78-74, I can see that. Um, it, it, it depended on what you liked, um, but I thought it was a, a, a much closer fight and a, and a harder fight to call. I I was watching Corona in the corner before the decision, and he, there was no sense of elation in the corner. Like, yeah. like times when you say it might be that both fighters think that they won. I didn't really get the feeling in looking at Corona in the corner that he really felt uh, that he had won I the think, fight. He, yeah, he accepted this loss, and, and, and that's fair. All right, Jessica Rosales is in the ring with Valencia. Take it away, Jess. No, keeping that undefeated record intact. Pedro Valencia, let's talk about tonight's fight. Eight rounds of very exciting boxing. Did you expect it to go the distance? Uh, we always expect to go the distance. It's boxing, you never know, you know. Everybody is a, can have a tough fight. I had a tough fight. No, we did see you a couple times switch into that southpaw stance. Tell us about that strategy. It feels like you didn't do it as much later on in the fight. 
uh, I saw it in the mo in the beginning fight that it was working, so I started using it more. But then I saw you started adjusting to it, so I had to switch back. And yeah. And of course, we did have a crowd here for you tonight. We heard people that were cheering for you. What do you want to say to everybody that came out? We got people back there clapping, people over here clapping. What do you want to say to the fans? I appreciate everybody that came out here tonight, showed me support. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations on the win. I'll send it back to you guys. Oh, Corona, California. Two more fights to go. Beth Durant, Doug Fisher, and Rich Murata. Standing room only crowd. Beautiful summer evening in Corona, California. All right, Rich, Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. More details on it. When is it? It's uh, next uh, Friday and Saturday night, the weekend induction. Uh, it's got a four events, two on Friday, a meet and greet, and a, and a VIP party that fans this year can buy tickets to. Then on Saturday, a free amateur boxing uh, show that's going to be uh, a, a, a cracker, really. But we, those have been very popular the last couple of years. And then the, the big induction gala, which will take place on a Saturday night. And we have an all-star cast getting inducted. Floyd Mayweather, Roy Jones Jr., Fernando Vargas, James Tony, wow. Michael Nunn, Andre Ward, Jeez. Julian Jackson, Miguel yeah. Cotto, Azuma Nelson. I mean, it's, we've got it's it's a wonderful, wonderful, and somebody you'll appreciate, Jerry Eisenberg. Oh, being okay. In, inducted. In his, yeah. A, you know, a great, great writer and author. Uh, in his 90s guy. and still going strong. That's right. So we're looking forward to it. You can go to nvbhof.com, nvbhof.com for your tickets. All right, and I gotta ask the dumb question. How do you get all those people to show up at the same time? Like, I mean, what's the coordination for this? Let me get Keenan Wright to the ring, easy. please. Keenan Wright, I kind of stepped please. back from that area <laughs> after a couple of years of that. It was a, it was, it's a, it's a rough, a very daunting task, and this year more so because COVID knocked us out of two years yeah. of having inductions. So this year we're jamming three inductions into. Uh, oh, that's into why one. so many. Okay. We named one very small class, which was the 2021 class of. Roy Jones Jr. and Floyd Mayweather. They were the only two in the, in the uh, class. Yeah, that's the voice of Rich Murata. Doug Fisher, the editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine. Doug, when you look at some of the, the state of boxing right now, summer has been a hot. We mentioned all the different cards that the promoters are putting on right now, but it continues to turn as we head towards the fall. Some fights, I mean, they're in well, talks, right? Keenan Wright yeah, to the there's, there's, there's side, please. I mean, Keenan listen, Wright to the ring. We had a, a tremendous heavyweight championship fight um, today from Saudi Arabia. Um, uh, Alexander Usyk defended his uh, unified titles and also won the vacant Ring Magazine heavyweight championship since Tyson Fury has retired, or so he says. <laughs> well, who knows? Keenan Wright he to might the come ring, back. Please, Keenan Wright side, please. If he comes back, that's great. We'd, we'd love to see Tyson Fury um, try to solve that puzzle that Usyk presents in the ring. Um, next month, we've got uh, the, the trilogy. We've got uh, Canelo Alvarez going up against Gennady Golovkin. And Gennady Golovkin passed his prime 40 years old, but still the number one middleweight in boxing challenging for the, the undisputed super middleweight titles. All right, Senator Franco, who we got? Okay, five fans, let's get the party started once again. Please welcome from San Diego, National City, California. Here is Elias Adiguez. Woo! 
San Diego's own Elias Diaz. Second time fighting in the United States. San Diego, he's undefeated. 11 and 0, a big challenge tonight. He steps up in competition. Very confident young man in his ability. He comes in at the B side. But he's the undefeated fighter. Oh. So obviously he's entering this ring with a lot of confidence. Does not know how to lose as a professional. He's walking in right now. We've had four fights in the books, two more to go. This is our co-feature, Elias Diaz. A shout out to everybody watching us in San Diego. Well, Alex Campanova said it. You know, he said basically Diaz is putting it on the line. He could have picked an easier fight, chose not to do it. And now, please welcome his opponent as he makes his way to the ring, ladies and gentlemen from Corona, California, Harris, Luis Lopez. Oh, a little freestyle <laughs> for him. Yeah. Without oh. your music. Oh, come Debbie, on now. Debbie Deb, get the Aquanet oh, out, Doug. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, step. This is a, yeah, this is, this is old school. What a jam right here, Louis Lopez. He's got his game face on as well. And I really enjoy watching this young man fight. Um, and he's somebody that we've called a lot of his yep. fights and we've seen the progression with him. We've seen him add layers to his game. I think Henry Ramirez is doing a great job with him. And you see the uh, fan reaction oh, he was yeah. getting over there. And uh, from what I understand, he sold about a quarter of the tickets to wow. tonight's card. He's and a he, local kid, right? And he could have sold more. Coming in from Debbie Deb. This song was out when Mitch Murata was calling Raider games <laughs> in the Super Bowl. Come on, Sonny. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present the co-main event of the evening, sponsored by K-Town 88 and Delicioso Eats, Belgard. Makita Tools Rule the Outdoors, and Hustler Casino, Los Angeles' only luxury casino. This bout's scheduled for eight rounds of action in the welterweight division. At ringside, your three judges scoring the bout should go the distance are Fernando Villarreal, Raul Kais Sr., and Ron Scott Stevens. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Daniel Sandoval. Fight fans, here we go. Introducing first, but another red corner. He stepped in the range line with a black trunks with gold. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 146 pounds even. Tonight, he enters the ring undefeated. 11 wins with zero losses. Six of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, from National City, San Diego, California, here is Elias Diaz. And introducing his opponent, running across the ring out of the blue corner. He stepped to the ring sign with the brown camel trunks. When he stepped onto the scale, he went in officially at 146.6 ready pounds. As a professional, he has 13 fights to his credit, including 11 victories with one defeat and one about even. Four of his victories come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a fighting pride of Corona, California. Who he is? Please welcome Louis. Lopez! Once again, your referee, Daniel Sandler, will get the final instructions. You receive my instructions and address them on the key fight. Be my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch them up. Let's go to war. Hey, not a lot separating these young welterweights. Luis Lopez is the younger man at 25. Elias Diaz has the height advantage by two inches. Their reach is identical. And another tough one to call. Absolutely. I like the energy. A lot of pent up energy yeah. in, in these corners, man. These guys are, are ready to let loose. Beth Duran, that was the voice of Doug Fisher and Rich Murata on the broadcast here. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be. If you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook, make sure you interact with us. Use the hashtag Thompson Boxing on Twitter. Louis Lopez, undefeated. I know, 11-1-1. One one. 
Elias Diaz is undefeated, but it's easy to say that Lopez has faced the tougher competition in his career. Absolutely. Diaz has one fight in the United States, and that was last year at the Doubletree Hotel in Sacramento. Not a Thompson show, but it was a Doubletree. Okay. Believe it or not, <laughs> other people can use a Doubletree in California. Okay, guys, excuse my ignorance. Where's National City? To the east of San Diego. Okay. And California's a big state. Yeah. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of cities, a lot of towns. Don't uh, judge me. It's in San Diego County. Okay. <laughs> it's like saying, I'm from LA, but Inglewood. Right. Like that. Gotcha. National City. So, San Diego area. No. Yeah, so, his squad is wearing Padre hats. Louis Lopez from Corona. Played football for the Corona Centennial Huskies. He was a linebacker in high school. Yes. And he tags Elias here in the first round. Digging is Louis Lopez. Lopez is looking nice and loose. Yeah. The early in his career, he would come in so thick. He would be, yeah, and he, he would be tight too. He'd be straight up and down. I'm, I'm seeing head and upper body movement. I'm seeing some feints. Yeah, well, he's got a stand up style. He still holds his hands up high. But yes. when he's at his best, he's throwing combinations. Correct. And he goes body and head with those combinations. He'll go he'll go right, left, right with a move just to the body. Yeah. I, I, I like the upper body movement I'm seeing from him. I like the, the footwork. I like the in and out. But he's he, it's still his trademark aggression. And you're absolutely right, Rich. He's a stand-up, one-two boxer um, who will go to the body. You know, operates out of a high guard. He's a stalker. But we're seeing some more wrinkles from him. And, and that's evolved, really, I think, since his loss, that one loss. I think every fight after that loss, he's added something to his game. I've seen a little bit more to what he, he can do in terms of his physical tools and in terms of his style. And the fighter from San Diego, Diaz has a shot yep. of his own. Diaz has got a really quick left. He's got some nice hand speed, Diaz. Lopez's only loss was to the Avatar Saul Bustos in 2020. After that, he's put three fights together in the victory side. Good yeah. opening round, scheduled for eight in our co-feature. Thompson boxing. Oh, they're gonna, DJ gonna stick with the freestyle? <laughs> I tell you, you can count the, uh, the uh, number of dull rounds tonight on no hands. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Every round has been heated. Every round has been competitive. No hands. <laughs> there you go. Ah, oh, Rich, I love working with you. Good flow, good flow. Rich Murata, legendary. Doug Fisher, legendary. Nothing to rent. Driving. <laughs> Hardest working man in broadcast. <laughs> Absolutely. Because we got bills to pay, just like these fighters. <laughs> That's the corner of Elias Diaz, and you see that Padre Brown cap in the corner. Six for nine, coming strong. Second round underway. So for Louis Lopez, in 2019, he had a draw against Demarcus Late. And in 2020, he had a loss to Saul Bustos, and that's something that Henry Ramirez has talked to us about how the development of the fighters at a Thompson show, you get fed guys earlier than if you were with a different promotion because the time period is faster. It has to be for the development. That was good work Lopez got against Saul Bustos. Yeah. No shame in losing a decision to that dude. That guy's a tremendous talent. Well, there's a reason that Bustos is having trouble getting fights because of his style. He's 15-0-1 now. Any room only crowd, Omega Products International in Corona, California. Lopez will need to tap the body. Diaz has a lot of hand speed and he can move. He can stick and move if he wants to. So if Lopez is going to slow that down, he needs to tap the body, take some wind out of Diaz's sails. Both these guys are attempting to take control of this fight. Attempting a great word right there, because neither of them is doing it. 
they're, they're throwing needy blows. Yeah. Yeah, there's no schedule for eight. It'll be interesting to see if we go. Because yeah. they're both starting to sit down on their punches. Right. Lopez, I thought, had a good first two minutes in that first round. And then Diaz just seemed to kind of all of a sudden get into the fight. We're in Corona, California. But we got people watching us in Baitham, Upper Silesia, Poland. Believe it or not, we got the message from Sizmon W, S Z Y M O N W. We appreciate you watching on the Thompson Boxing Facebook page. I hope they're enjoying the show. Oh, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Diaz got in with the right uppercut, followed with the left. He's fighting with the, with the swagger and confidence of an undefeated fighter. Uh, let's have the. These guys, neither of them are known as great knockout punchers. I mean, they're, they're, they're not, but they've got power. Yes. And they're throwing some rock-like uh, shots here against each other. I think Lopez needs to get his jab going. John Johnson watching us in the 562 in Long Beach. Checking out the fights. Appreciate you. I'll meet you at JoJo's one of these days. Final seconds of the second round. Oh, a good left from Diaz. The final wow. from San Diego. I was wondering who won this round. Yeah. I'm thinking uh, there Diaz. It is. Yeah, he swayed him with that hook. Lopez with Henry Ramirez in his corner. Eyes wide open. <laughs> Get caught like that at the end of a the round. They're having a, a hell of a conversation over there, the two of them. Henry's a fine young trainer. You forget that like, he's still in his early 40s, how long he's been he's a trainer. He's been around forever, yeah. He's been bald forever, too. But he's <laughs> I think he was training Chris Arioli when he's like eight years yeah. old. Yeah, right. Must have been, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, did a great job getting Chris to the championship level. Yeah, they had a good run. And Henry's been uh, on the upset side, too. A lot of the PB show, PBC shows Henry goes to, guys come in as an opponent, and they're leaving with their hands raised. It's a great job developing young fighters, one of them being yeah. Richard Brewer. Yeah, he's, well, and he's got a good amateur team as well. Yeah. Has anyone seen him with, ever without the Dodger hat? Do we know what <laughs> color his yes. hair is? I've seen him with the Rams hat. <laughs> <laughs> Big Rams fan. Fan of Sports Talk Radio. Oh, you get messages while I'm working at ESPN Radio. Hey, I'm listening. I'm like, should you be in the gym? <laughs> so, yeah, my amateur class starts in five minutes. I mean, like, just like we were talking about Ben Lira earlier fight, how the veterans around, they, they see so much, but, you know, anybody can train the world champion and have one guy, but it's about the development of these young fighters. And you continue to grow, bringing them from the amateurs to a pro or just bring him as an amateur to a fine young man. Two good fighters in the ring right now. Jeez, this is, this is tit for tat. Oh, oh, a good left hook by Lopez. What a hook. Diaz ate that and stayed on his feet. So he's showing a chin, he's been caught a couple times. That was the single best punch of the fight. And Lopez needs to, he needs to tap that body. As he's in with a, a fast, confident boxer who has nice, sharp technique. So he wants to take that energy and wants to take away some of that, some of that wind from Diaz's sails. Attacking the body is the best way to do that. Nice yeah. jab, yeah. Yeah, nice jab from Lopez. He needs to find his jab in, in, this, in this match, and it's difficult because Diaz has a nice fast jab himself. Oh, oh, slip, slip, a slip, a slip. Lopez was a sportsman. He, he didn't pull the trigger. Uh, Daniel Hernandez, <laughs> I mean, Daniel Sandoval referee jumped right on it. It's warm and a lot of sweat on that canvas in our fifth fight. 
went pouring off of each other's bodies. If we see any more of that, we could oh. have someone going in to wipe down the ring. Nice hook landed by uh, Diaz. Wasn't a lot of power behind it, but it was, it was nice and, and clean. a really compelling um, matchup of styles, but mainly uh, a, a confrontation of, of willpower between these two young men. Neither, oh man, they gotta watch that spot. They gotta, yeah, they're gonna have to uh, yeah, they have someone have to. come in and take care of that. Maybe they can do that between rounds. 10 that, seconds to go. That's dangerous. And it's right on the center logo. And neither fighter has imposed his will on the other. It's very close stuff. And the commission is going to jump into the ring. They're going to have jump in there. We got our, look at our squad. Thompson Boxing Crew, commission, team effort. Wiping down that sweat in the middle of the ring. Teamwork, do what you got to do. Yeah. All right, Fight Star, Supreme Boxing. Seconds out, Fino Boxing, True Boxing Heads, we appreciate you. Sharing the broadcast tonight from Corona, California. Both these guys have real confident looks on their face right now. And I kind of read a lot into facial expressions and sure. body language in the corner. Toby Bartlett watching in the UK. What's up, Toby? <laughs> what time is it there? Uh, it's time to watch some fights. <laughs> I guess so. Eight, eight hours difference. Sure. Yeah. Francisco Salazar, Agent Corona lost unanimous decision to Pedro Valencia. Uh, now they want the corner cleaned. Eddie, uh, Daniel oh, Sandoval too, too, many, too many ice cubes. Gotta get that out of, that is, that is dangerous. And if you're here for Ruben Ace Torres, he's coming up next in the main event. Fourth round, schedule for eight. Undefeated. Diaz trying to be a little more aggressive and back Lopez up in this round. Diaz's corner is asking him to find angles. So don't just go straight in, step to the side and, and let those body shots and that hook, left hook fly. Uh, Dougie, do you want a fight report from Francisco Salazar? <laughs> of course. He says he's driving his daughter around, hoping she falls asleep. Hey. Oh yeah, I remember those days. Yeah, hopefully she falls asleep from the from the car ride. Not because these fights, it's a good one right here between Louis oh, Lopez yeah. and Elias wow. Diaz. Louis Lopez going to the body. I think that's the key. I, and we haven't seen as much of it in this fight no. as I've seen him do before. I think but he's showing a little of it in this round. Yeah, he's having some trouble getting in close because this guy is so fast and so short. And his will, I think, I think Diaz's will is just as strong as Lopez's. He pushes him through the ropes. I like what I see from Elias Diaz. You know, usually when a fighter is nine, ten fights are in Tijuana, Wonder what we're gonna get. Looks like a solid fighter. Now this guy can fight, man. I like him. He's got some real good technique. He had 125 amateur fights, won 100 of them. You can see it. You can see it in his form. He's got a good foundation. A lot of them fight that they want to because of COVID, the pandemic, he's fighting down there. Like I even told him, hey, even I went down to work at Big Punch Arena, baby. <laughs> yeah. I made my debut down there. Did you? Oh, I worked one fight. Oh, what was it like? I took Jessica Rosales. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I heard about that. We got paid, <laughs> we got paid in cash. Yes. With a rubber band. I heard about that. <laughs> I heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> and Jessica said, but the, what are you doing to me? <laughs> like, don't worry about it. Don't pass another. Hey, but those kids do come to fight down there. Uh huh. They scrap. 
It's in book sale specials, they say. Boy, this is a this is another tip for tat around. Well, technically, these guys do a lot of stuff right. Yeah, really they good. do. There's a lot going on. You know, chess match often has a kind of a, a derogatory connotation, but not not, a, not in this fight. You know, they're, well, this is high think, speed. This yeah. is high speed chess. Exactly. Yeah, and they're that's thinking, entertaining. Yeah. They are thinking in there, and they're carrying out their plans. And you see the upcoming fight: Thompson Boxing working with Pro Boxing Florida. Miguel Maldonado will be on that card, and then uh, September, Double Tree, October. Sacramento, make sure you download the Thompson Boxing app for all the information on upcoming shows, interviews, behind the scenes work. Brought to you by the Thompson Boxing crew. Shout out to California, Joe Pahar. On the ones and twos, the wheels, the cameras, the audio, all that good stuff. You guys must think like, oh, we got a big old production crew. Nope, two man doing it all. Shout out to the camera squad. Bringing you these shows on social media. Fifth round, scheduled for eight. Tight action, back and forth. You guys think it matters who's the aggressor round and round between the two? Because they both they've taken turns. Yeah. In that role. I think Lopez has been the aggressor um, more than Diaz has. And Lopez. Diaz has been aggressive in spots, um, and he's been effective as an aggressor and as a, a, a boxer. Coming up next, Ruben Torres against the Venezuelan fighter Christian Baez. That'll be our main event here from Corona, California. Two lightweight punchers. As Rich Murata said in open almost three hours ago, that he was going to expect some rounds tonight. Oh, yeah. What was that number you had, Rich? Everybody goes the distance. Everybody has winning records. Well, the records are almost identical. Yeah. Like they have 18 equal, and 0 against 18 and yeah. 1. Here we got what? 11 and 0 against 11 and yeah. 1. Yeah. Equal experience. They're, they're young. They're hungry, they're ambitious, they're confident, and we're seeing that. We're, just, we're seeing a, a clash of, of two young welterweights in, in, their, in their physical prime. If you want to move on to the pro box or the show box or whatever right? show you want to get out to, you've got to fight your way out of and the that's top the show. When we talk about that with a, a lot of the fighters on tonight's card, and Diaz is another one. He said, I'm 28 years old, it's time to make my it move. Is. He's right. And he's fighting like it. He's, he's, he's fighting with uh, he's fighting with a sense of urgency. I just spell urgency with E R. <laughs> That's the old Michael Thompson, the former Laker. He said on the Laker broadcast I was working with time. He said, "Oh, you got to have the three, three E: effort, something else, and the, the most important one, urgency. <laughs> right? Effort, energy, and urgency. Like." Ooh. I was like the scene from Animal House. He's on a roll, just let him go. <laughs> I think this is another hard to score round. Um, I had the fight even 38-38 after four rounds. I can see that, definitely see that. But Lopez has done a couple of real nice maneuvers there. Oh, his, his footwork has improved so much, Rich. Ernie Green says this tweet, I love Louis Lopez walkout song when I hear music by Debbie Deb. Memories of Rainbow Roller Rink in North Tonawanda, New York. <laughs> That's a deep pool right there, Ernie. Okay. You guys, where's National City? Where's North Tonawanda? <laughs> 
Rich Murata, when's the last time you seen Bruce Springsteen? Uh, it's been a few years, I'll tell you. It's been, I think, since about 2016. 2017, maybe, was the last. What's wrong with in, you? In Phoenix, yeah. Well, COVID. Oh, COVID yeah. knocked everything <laughs> out, man. So he hasn't been touring? You're right. He starts again in February. All right, I'm going to go to a Bruce show. <laughs> just because if you work in sports, especially in baseball, you got to be a Bruce Springsteen fan. Yeah. yeah. Those curmudgeon writers will tell you, Bruce. There you go. Well, we're going to go. I'm going to go with Rich Murata to see Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> next year, I got a year long tour next year. Stadiums? You, yeah. Well, U.S. US in the beginning is going to be uh, uh, arenas, then in stadiums in Europe, and then stadiums back in the United States. Is he going to do a Liverpool? He's got, he's got two or three. He's not in Liverpool. He's got two or three. Uh, Concerts in England, one in Birmingham actually, and two in London at Hyde Park. They're going to do one of those big hundred thousand fans a day at Hyde Park. Well, got to, I got to go see a fight in the UK. Oh yeah, because That's an experience. it better be Usyk against Tyson Fury, right? Oh Doug? wow, that, that would be something That'd be else. worth the trip. And any of you who believe that Tyson Fury is retired, <laughs> welcome to boxing. Oh, he'll be back. He'll be yeah. back. Hundred million to go to Saudi Arabia or Dubai. You know what? But, but for right now, let, let's let's appreciate that we have a, a, a heavyweight champion as talented and gutsy as Alexander Usyk. Oh. What a what a special talent! Yeah, it, was, it was fun to watch the heavyweights this afternoon. Put on a show, and these these young welterweights are putting on a show. They've just been so all business in there. I mean, the intensity on both of their faces. No funny business. As I well, it's not like, like the referees don't, don't have to, to separate these guys. They don't have to. They don't have to really get involved. Uh, you know, these Eddie, guys are here to fight. They're here. They're here to put forth 100% sincere effort. And the effort is to the body this round from Louis Lopez. You're starting to see some redness on the sides of Eli Diaz, the fighter from San Diego. Both these guys have shown they can take a punch. Let's see the conditioning and the body work and they can start chopping. Both guys are showing that, that they're they're versatile as well. Yeah. We're really? seeing we're seeing Lopez's lateral movement in this round, and uh, I'm impressed. They're both kind of fighting their own fight. Usually you get a one guy make will force somebody to fight another fight. Yeah. To fight his own fight. But these guys are both being able at times to establish their own styles in there. Most of the time. And it's just all business. It's like Angelo Dundee, I heard him say on one fight telecast one time. Ain't nobody mesmerizing nobody. Ain't nobody doing nothing to nobody. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Angelo Dundee. <laughs> For your quadruple uh, negative there. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Sixth round in the books. Got to break between Lopez and Diaz. All right, what are you guys saying on YouTube? Let me look at some of these comments. Uh, okay, now they're saying that Fury's going to duck Usyk. <laughs> <laughs> Shushan Boxing, hey, that, you, you're always with good comments. Shout out to Shushan Boxing. Uh, coming up next will be Ruben Torres and Angela Alcala. Watching in Tijuana. She's going for Team Buddy, Team Lopez. You know, if Fury fought Anthony Joshua with just the WBC title on the line, it would still be a huge event sure. in England. It'd still be a mega event if Deontay Wilder crossed the ocean and took on Anthony Joshua. Wait, didn't uh, he Deontay, offer, he finding somebody? Yeah, he's, he's, he's returning in uh, mid-October against Robert Hellenius. Okay, just a, it's a solid opponent for, a, a, you know, coming off back-to-back um, -back stoppage losses. And we've got Andy Ruiz going against Luis Ortiz. Oh, I forgot that, about that. Yeah, Is that next that's, month? That's, that's, that's pretty month. significant. It's September 4th at Crypto Arena. And uh, Deontay actually visited Luis Ortiz recently at it is training here in Southern California. I like I like Andy in that matchup. I gotta go with the youth. G Funk Boxing. Fury will fight Usyk. Yeah, it's called money. Lots of it. There'll be a lot of two-way predictions on that. Two-way betting on that. G Funk Boxing. Wilder Joshua is still a big fight. Absolutely. 
They don't need any titles, titles on the line for that because that is just a, a shootout. That's a knockout. Stylistically, that's a, yeah, that's a fight that's going to end in a spectacular knockout, and there's going to be a lot of drama. I on like the opening this. Bell. Shoe shot, I like it. Time for undisputed at heavyweight. Meantime, these guys are engaging in a red hot seventh round. Yep. Body work from Lopez, left wow. on the right. You can hear the thuds here in the seventh round. Absolutely. And those take a toll late in the fight. But Diaz is not wilted. Yeah, credit to both fighters on their conditioning and the stamina and fortitude that they're showing tonight. These guys are fighting just as hard in the seventh round as they did in the first round. Lopez here in the seventh with body work and starting to Go for that uppercut, a different wrinkle here in the seventh round. Stop with the head, honey. And remember what I said, Lopez's key to victory in this is, is the body attack. He's got to attack the body, because that's going to slow Diaz down a little bit. There's those combinations to yeah. the body. The Ozarker, check it in, what's happening? What's up, Ozarker? Shout out to the 417. Yeah. That's right, Doug is from the Ozarks, he knows. Oh yes. Have you watched that show, Doug? Uh, first season. <laughs> it's too intense. That show's too intense for oh, me. It, it literally stresses me out. Keep on going, baby. Just like Louis Lopez and Elias Diaz are going. Back and forth action here in Akome. What about, all the, what about the co-main in the tonight's head, well, today's heavyweight? Hergovich and the Chinese that was, fighter. That Jack. was a fun 12-rounder. Yeah. Fun. I thought maybe uh, Big Bang Zhang, I thought maybe he won that fight. I did, too. I thought, was, I was thought in my opinion, he was. Yeah. As I told somebody who asked me, hey, how should I bet this? A friend of mine who's a casual uh, boxing, yeah. he said, the odds are interesting. I said, because I was watching the earlier show on the zone, I said, stay away from it because some of the judges' court cards in Saudi Arabia have oh, been a yeah. they've been all over the place. Yep. Because he wanted to bet uh, the Chinese fighter. Yeah, he two of the scorecards. Yeah, two of the scorecards um, had it 115, 112, which means they had eight rounds for Ergovic, which was ridiculous. Ruben Torres coming up next. Our main event against Cristian Baez. Saludos a la gente que nos está mirando en Venezuela. And even the scorecard in the main event. I, I believe Doug even uh, cursed on his Twitter account. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What up, Glenn Feldman? Man, I, I, I don't. The, the less said about that, the better. <laughs> uh, good fight, good fight, but uh, definitely the right man won. It's just when you go to countries, that don't have the recent traditional boxing industry, I'm always cautious about. Even though they're having judges that are from, they had an English judge, they had a British, uh, a UK, a yeah. Ukraine judge, an American judge. Something's always funky. Yeah. Joshua, you know, he was the challenger, but he was still the house fighter. Yeah. Eighth and final round, Luis Lopez, Elias Diaz going back and forth. And you know, what's really amazing is the two have maintained their speed. And the point, speed Rich. of hand is still incredible. Yeah, as well as the punch output. Lopez, does he have another gear in him? He's trying to out flurry Diaz if he can, especially when he goes to the body. Yeah, he's starting to slap a lot with these punches though. I'd like to see Lopez turn those shots over. Get more respect from Diaz. Pablo Mejia, saludos! In Venezuela. Diaz is trying to push Lopez back. He's still got his, he's still got that sharp jab. Vallejo, California watching, Ray Fernandez. Rooting on Henry Ramirez. Empty up the tank, Rich. <laughs> right now for these guys. Yeah, I, th I, I think they've been emptying it since round one. Well, whatever dot you got left, let it oh. go. Oh, Lopez with the right. 
Uppercut from Lopez. Yeah, both guys were launching a right, and Lopez beat him to the shot. There's a nice right cross from Diaz landing. Yes. Yeah, Diaz has got to fight back because that shot by Lopez got his attention. I think Diaz is having a pretty good round here. Yes, he is. This is how the fight started. It looks like it's going to end like that in a right. minute. Less than a minute to go in the fight. I like the forward marching aggression from Diaz. Crowd is into it. You can hear it from around us. They should be. Man, good action. Good action. Two guys who are easy to root for, you Absolutely. know, as people. Yes. Look at Louie. I mean, nice, humble, hardworking kid. You hardly even notice him if he's in, in the room, you know? I mean. If they come out, put on a show for the fans. They let it go from the opening bell, and they're going to let it go to the final bell. Lopez and Diaz. Thompson boxing in Corona. Eight good rounds. Yep. A lot of respect between the two. Ovation from the crowd for both of the fighters. Good Louis respect. Lopez for Corona. Elias Diaz from San Diego. Interesting to see how the judges have it. And we'll come back with the results from Corona. Paving the way to your personal sanctuary that you simply can't stop thinking about. Find yours at bellguard.com. Makita's cordless outdoor power equipment. The mower is a part of the world's largest battery system and cuts non-stop for up to two miles. The self-propelled model makes mowing effortless. Get unstoppable power without the hassles of gas. Reach speeds of up to 116 miles per hour with the single battery blower. One system, endless possibilities. Now get two extra free batteries. Live from the Hustler Casino in Gardena, California. Watch the most well-known local and international poker players take the stage and go all in. From low stakes to high stakes, the action will be wild. Tune in to Hustler Casino Live, streaming five days a week on YouTube. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after eight exciting rounds of boxing action to the judges' scorecards, we go. Both Fernando Villarreal and Ron Scott Stevens both see the bout the same, 77 to 75. 
while Raw Clay Sr. sees about 78, 74. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision from Corona, California, Louis Lopez. Louis Lopez gets the victory. He improves a 12 and one. And one. He had to work for it, as somebody said on the crew. Uh, let's see here. Both these guys are tough. The Ozarkers said that. Ozarkers, no. Yeah. Toby Bartlett, shout out to the matchmakers. You're right. Hyro, this was a grinder. Absolutely. That's yes. a great way to describe I, I thought it was a fight. fair decision. I yes, thought, I fair scorecard. Lopez had, a, had an edge in the fight. I had it 77 75 for Louis Lopez. Yep. Diaz fought well. He right did. in there. I scored the final round for Diaz. Uh, it was now, a lot of effort. Yeah. First time he's had to deal with a defeat now tonight. He didn't complain about it up there. He, uh, he basically applauded. Uh, Elias Diaz, heck of a showing for him. His first time on the Thompson show, he loses. But Doug, I definitely want to see this young man again. Yeah, same here. He can fight. Yeah, he's definitely. Got, he, and I, I like his style. He, he's a boxer, but he's an aggressive boxer uh, with a lot of athleticism. All right, the winner tonight, Louis Lopez. He has a big crowd, so Jessica Rosales, you better speak up. His crowd is here for him. All right, you guys, before we get this started, Louis Lopez fans, let me know where you guys are at. Make some noise. All right, Louis, congratulations on the win tonight. Obviously, having your fans here tonight, being in your hometown, there's got to be some pressure to not just win, but to look good also. But tell me about how much that changed your game. Oh, it, it was a, a little nerve-wracking, I'm not going to lie. I woke up this morning, I had, I had a little bit of anxiety, but I had to get over it, just like any professional does. We don't quit, we come out here and we show out. And I had to do that in front of my people. You guys hear that? You guys made him a little bit nervous today, but he got that W for you guys. Getting the win, obviously, eight rounds going the distance, a very hard fight. He really made you work for that win tonight. Tell me about which round do you feel you did your best in? It really felt back and forth the whole time. I thought like the first four rounds, I thought I really had myself. I let him get away in the fifth and the sixth, so I had to pick it back up in the seventh. He came hard in the eighth, so I give it to him. He, he came in shape and he came with it, but I had to just, you know, stack up and just do what I had to do. And of course, after a hard fought win like tonight, what is next for you? What are you hoping will be that next step? Hopefully get another one by the end of the year. Take a little break after this. I've been fighting uh, pretty often. I fought this month and well, two months ago in June, so. I want to give my body a little break, a couple weeks, and then get back in there, hopefully, at the end of the year, and make a name for myself next year for, you know, keep at it. Sounds good. We're going to have the camera turn with us just a little bit, so that way Louie can take a look over here at his fans. What do you want to say to everybody that came out here tonight and supported you? Team Lopez Army, let me hear you. I want to thank everybody for coming out and supporting me, man. I wouldn't be doing this without you guys. I do this for you. Thank you, guys. I love you. Louie, congratulations on the win tonight. Guys, we'll send it back to you. Thank you. I'm excited to be back tonight. Um, all my fans, all my friends, all my family that pulled up, thank you for showing up. It's going to be a great night full of fireworks. I'm not going to let them out that ring to make it 10 rounds. So we've been in camp since February, baby. Uh, just making sure everything's uh, staying sharp as far as my weight, as far as, you know, getting stronger, feeling into my body. I'm only 24 years old and already at 18 and over 15 knockouts. So uh, just staying sharp is, is always um, something to learn. Um, we're definitely going to show it tonight. We're ready. Um, going through sparring with tons of dudes. We had to bring in lefties in the end of camp. Um, once we found out we were going to go against a lefty, but it's nothing new. We've been here before. I know he's got pop, I know he could crack, but I don't think he's ever been in there with somebody like me at my caliber. I definitely think he's not ready to take my power. And even if I gotta box him, he's still not ready for that. Salute to everybody that's bought tickets, everybody that's bought a t-shirt. I appreciate y'all. We couldn't be here and couldn't do this without y'all. Gracias a todos los que los apoyan. Muchas gracias por comprar camisetas, boletos, los que están mirando por televisión. It's gonna be a great night and I appreciate all of you.
después de, de tanto tiempo inactivo, eh, para mí es un placer volver a Rick y un honor. It's really a pleasure to be back. I had a little time of inactivity in my career. Um, I am thankful for this opportunity to basically restart my career. It's a new day for me. It's a new day for Christian Baez. Oh, este, en realidad nunca me, de, me alejé de, del gimnasio. Siempre he estado uh, en gimnasio. I never stopped training even though I wasn't having any activity. Uh, I, kept on, I kept on working. I wasn't preparing for a fight specifically, but I was getting ready always and I was maintaining my weight and uh, myself in shape. Once I found out that the fight was going to happen, there was no way back and I just made some adjustments. I just uh, our training, our sparring, and just prepared to make the weight. Ah, este, yo creo que todos aquí I think all of the fighters that are on this card tonight want to showcase themselves. Everybody is, is, is going to be fighting really hard to do better for themselves. Uh, but what I can do against Ruben Torres, I know he's a good fighter, but he lacks the experience, and that's where I'm going to take advantage of it. Uh, there's no way to say it. I'm going to use my experience against him, and that's going to be the difference for the fight. Bueno, yo creo que uh, decirle que gracias por el apoyo. Uh, antes que nada, gracias a Dios, a mi familia que siempre me ha apoyado. First of all, I want to thank God and my family for always being there for me. And to all the fans that have supported me throughout, just want to let you know that Christian Bias is back. I just basically put my career on pause. But today is a new day, it's a new beginning, and I'm going to be victorious tonight. I know I will be victorious. Here we go, Fight Fans. Let's get the action going. Please welcome out of the red corner from San Juan, Venezuela. Here he is, Cristian El Espartano Payes. Ah, uh, making his U.S. debut. The Spartan, Christian Baez. He's got it all going out. Coming into some Daddy Yankee. Somos de calle. I'm from the streets. Oh, wow. He's got headgear. Oh, oh, he's doing it all. <laughs> Doug, I went in the he's back. Smart. <laughs> I went in the back to talk to him. You know why he's getting his hand wrapped? Had it on the entire time. Okay. Yeah, my... Wait, he had that mask on while he was getting his hands wrapped? Doug? Okay. <laughs> he had it on. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> he tried to do everything, the weigh-in and photos and everything. I'm like, yeah. so you know me being a smart ass. I'm like, so uh, this is a new look? He's like, yeah. I'm wearing it just for this fight. The Spartan Christian Baez. He's like, because I'm going to war. Yeah. I have that attitude. I'm like, all right, bro, whatever works for you. Yeah. But it's also like 110 degrees inside that warehouse. I know you're sweating. <laughs> Oh, and now, please welcome his opponent as he makes his way to the ring out of the blue corner from South Central California. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Ruben A. Stories. Ow. I was expecting some Nipsey Hustle, which you usually like to. Good, man. The <laughs> message. <laughs> Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Hey, you know what? I'm going to shout out to a lot hey, of the that's fighters a, that, today. That's real old school right there. The music's been good today, huh, Rich Morata? Yes. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? I'm he's, learning a lot. <laughs> he's, called, these, kids, these kids have walk-in game, man. <laughs> no, it, the props and points, of course, to Ace Torres for this one. Broken you know, glass. I hung in there till House of Pain. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. All right, we have some Grand Funk later on. Yes. Or some Steely Dan coming your way. Uh-oh. <laughs> Maybe some yes. yes. That's what I was listening to on the way over here. <laughs> way, to, way to know your audience. <laughs> here we go, main event time. Sonny Franco, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, Thompson Boxing Promotions is proud to present the feature attraction as this is the main event of the evening. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, 
Executive Officer Andy Foster, Chairman of Peter Viegas. This bout is sponsored by Thompson Building Materials, transforming places into beautiful places with locations throughout California. By Westlake Royal and Stone Solutions, stone veneer that redefines versatility. By Omega Products International, the leading stucco manufacturer in the USA. By Belgard, pave the way. By Makita, rule the outdoors. And last but not least, by Hustler Casino, Los Angeles' only luxury casino. At ringside, your timekeeper, Keenan Wright. Ringside physicians, Kelly Tucker and Andre Guerrero. Your three judges scoring this bout should it go the distance are Fernando Villarreal, Raul Kais Sr., and Ron Scott Stevens. And the man in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Thomas Taylor. Ten rounds of action in the lightweight division. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Omega Products International Outdoor Arena in Corona, California, where battles are fought, and champions are made, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let the battles begin! Uh, introducing first, fighting under the red corner, he stepped to the ring tonight wearing the white trunks with black. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 136.8 already pounds. As a professional, he has 19 fights to his credit, including 18 victories against one defeat, 17 of his victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us tonight from San Juan, Venezuela, here he is, Cristian El Espartano Baez. And introducing his opponent, fighting across the ring out of the blue corner. He stepped in the ring tonight with a white and black trunks trimmed with red. When he stepped onto the scale, he went in officially at 136.6 solid pounds. As a professional, he steps in the ring tonight undefeated. 18 wins with zero losses, 15 of victories coming to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome from South Central Los Angeles, California, here he is, the undefeated Ruben A. Once again, your referee in charge. To give a final instructions, Thomas Taylor. Okay, belt line's good on both sides, gentlemen. Got instructions in the back. Protect yourselves at all times. All right, let's see how these uh, lightweight punchers match up. Ruben Torres, six years younger at 24, four inches taller at six feet tall, and he has a slight reach advantage. We get ready to go in our main event here, Thompson Boxing in Corona, California. Ruben Ace Torres, trained by Danny Zamora. Uh, and one special message to Danny's wife, Lisa, who's watching from the hospital. She's been there for three weeks. Uh, Lisa, we wish you the best and a speedy recovery uh, with your battles. And I know that Ruben is a young man that's special to the family, is pretty much his family with them. As Danny Zamora had him since an amateur, now here is a pro with a record of 18 and 0, 16 KOs. And Doug, Ruben Torres, if you're watching it for the first time, a few years ago when he was the first or second bout on a fight on a bout, Steve Kim texted you and said, hey, there's this kid you need to keep an eye on. And every single fight, Ruben Torres continues to impress. Yeah, Steve, Steve was right. Steve's got a good eye for talent. Um, I think Steve uh, told me that Torres reminded him of a, of a young Diego Corrales in that he's a, a tall, stocking boxer puncher, but somebody that uh, is very comfortable on the inside. He, did, he doesn't always fight tall, even though he is tall, six feet. Um, he's got that kind of power where he can get in close and whack guys out with short hooks and crosses. I think the Corrales, Corrales for you, Rich, that's a special one for you. Oh yeah, well, you know, I, I love the Diego, the uh, lovely relationship. I have so much admiration for what he, accomplished in the ring and you know the the 
comparison with him and Diego, I think is valid. You know, I was, <laughs> even just in body type and what they do in the corners before the, I was watching him while he was being introduced, the only thing missing was the shimmy. Yeah, the Diego uh, right. shimmy in the corner. Yep, yeah. Um, sometimes Torres reminds me of another Thompson boxing product, uh, and that is uh, Osacito Lopez. I see that. He was a tall, rugged, lightweight who could box, he could punch, but he, he, he has that athleticism that uh, Josecito had in his prime. But tonight against Baez, he's in there with somebody with, you know, a, a, a south ball with power and, and decent hand speed. So he's gotta be, he gotta be careful. He's always dialed in, but he's in there with somebody who can punch with him. And Baez lands a left, a hook. The south ball is 18 to one, 17 KOs. And I think he tapped. Oh, oh and he did. That was a good punch. Oh, ho, ho. Yeah. Spartan. Making his U.S. debut, has tagged Ruben Ace Torres, and Torres is hurt for the first time in his career yeah. here in the first round. Yeah, Torres uh, is in is there. coming in, and they're watching him as well, and he has a following. Torres, how will he respond as he gets hit for the first time, and he's challenged for the first time in his career? Well, yeah. he responded immediately very well in that he immediately held. He grabbed yes. him and, and held on. He knew he was hurt, and he stopped and gave himself a few seconds respite. Oh, it's warming up here in the main event. Uh, Spartan, Christian Baez has a shot on his moment. mind. And yeah. Torres wore it. This yeah. is the first time I've seen his chin checked. Well, this is the first time he's been in with a fellow puncher. If you look at Baez's record, it, it, it almost mirrors Torres. As a, in a matter of fact, Baez has more knockouts. And you, um, but. Power aside, what Baez has that could be troubling for, for Torres, apart from the southpaw style, hand speed. He's got very quick hands, and he's a good counterpuncher. I, I saw the fight that he lost, and I, I thought he should have won. I, right, I thought he was winning that fight. He just, he, he ran into something stupid. Right, exactly. Now he ran fight into against a punch. El Venado Baez. Oh, you might have called that fight. No, it was in Mexico, I didn't yeah. do that fight. Okay. Uh, but El Venado, uh, stopped him. That was in 2019, the last fight that Baez has had. Yeah. So he took a break. He said, well, the pandemic being in Venezuela, I couldn't get fights. Yeah. So like I said, um, Ruben's got to be extra dialed in, extra careful in there. He's faced a, a variety of styles, and, and he's been, he's, he, he shared the ring with some tough customers. But uh, tonight he's in there with somebody with uh, quick hands and um, almost equal pop. Yeah, and at that time, the novel Baez wasn't known. Right. He got his name when he uh, rocked Gabe Flores Jr. Yeah, so we knew this. It was going to be a test for Ruben Torres. And after he got rocked, he got very quiet. And we're in an outdoor venue. Right. Oh! Torres clap hook! Oh! 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 <laughs> he didn't go down, but his glove touched the canvas, yes. and Ruben Torres answers the call here in the second. Yeah, Torres happy about that. Happy to get some revenge for, for that opening round. Baez, it was interesting, smiled and nodded at, yes. in a sign of respect, like, yeah, you got me. That was a good one. Now forget the jab. These guys are just going to low haymakers, huh? Oh, this Look is a out of Torres. Oh, it's a nice touch. touch. Oh, Torres gets caught. Yeah, Torres can't get overconfident in here. No, 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 no. Both guys Torres down is, in the second uh, round. Yes, Baez is is dangerous. Torres is bleeding from his nose. His eyes are really wide. He got tagged halfway through the second round. Schedule for 10? Nah, it ain't going. Well, usually at some point in every fighter's career, 99% uh, of them, they're going to face this moment. Ruben Torres was rocked in the first round. He's been dropped in the second round. He's got to answer some questions here tonight. If you want to graduate from the Thompson shows and get onto the showtime, to get onto the zones, you got to get through these fights because you can't go to that level with not being tested. We've seen many guys where the records are 21, 22, padded. They get hit for the first time. They don't know how to react. So we'll see what Ruben Torres can do here in his fight, the main event. Well, Torres even said, he said, this is the strongest challenge to me to date. Oh, yeah. And uh, I know that the guy that's coming here tonight is not coming here just to collect a check. And Bai is just cocky in that ring, isn't he? Yes, he is. And he's confident in his counter-punching ability. 
But these guys are they're, they're both very quick. They, they both have quick release with their with their punches. I think Ruben needs to uh, establish the distance and get his jab going. And I know it's not easy against a southpaw fighter. You don't want to trade with this guy, right? No, no, not this early. Not this early. You want to soften soften him up a little bit. Well, one of the things that Torres has always been able to do is break a guy down right. round by round. Increase his edge a little each round, but not so easy tonight. All right, to educate me, Doug, how does that get scored? 9-9. Nine, nine. Both guys hit the canvas, so it's, uh, they, they both lose a, po a point, basically. So I have it 18, I have it, um, Baez is ahead in this fight by one point because I scored the opening round for him. So I have it 19-18 for Christian Baez. Tell you, you can feel the tension in the outdoor venue. Baez, this is pretty interesting. He hasn't fought in two years. I thought that that inactivity might rear its ugly head tonight. But, but he, he looks sharp. He did not. No, he looks really fast. He looks fast, he looks sharp. I think Torres is, is giving him opportunities fighting as aggressively as he has in, in these opening rounds. Oh, they're loving this on YouTube. Heck of a fight back and forth. Third round. All fighters, they didn't go down, but their glove touched the canvas in the second. Yeah, they both, both guys, locked. Yeah, they landed good punches that uh, knocked the other off balance. Neither guy seemed seriously rocked or, or, or rattled. But they, um, I think both, both lightweights have to have a, a healthy amount of respect for each other. Ironically, I think the shot that Torres took in the first round that rocked him was actually the most telling blow of the fight so far, and that's the most anybody's been hurt, more so than either of the two knockdowns. Baez, keeping his hands really low, a smirk on his face the entire fight, not respecting the young Ruben Torres. He wants to get into Torres' head. He yeah, he's playing those games, in. huh? Yeah. Ooh, nice right, right hand from Torres. Yeah, that was a nice, nice right cross. Well timed from Torres. Old fighters with the Everlast and Mackey's gloves. And and it's it it's a good idea for Torres to employ some lateral movement. The one guy that beat Baez, he was he was he was very mobile. Yep. Kept moving, kept moving until he, he found the right shots. But he didn't start loading up with punches until like the fourth or fifth round. And it was basically one shot. Yes, it there, was. And it ended up being three knockdowns. Yeah. But it was one shot. That but he was, he was looking, he started looking for that one shot like after three rounds, like in the fourth and fifth round after Baez slowed down a little bit. And that fight was in ba Mexicali, so yes. Baez was on the road. Well, there are many of us out there, myself included now, who feel that Ruben Torres is a very special talent and has the ability to go to very high places in the boxing world. But he, he's facing a crisis here tonight. Yes, he is. He's in with a real opponent. A main event worthy opponent. And Doug, you know what? I just looked at my notes, I brought it up. You're right, I did call that fight. I thought so. <laughs> it, was a, it was a Golden Boy promotion. It was a show. Golden Boy promotion. One of their show. Facebook shows. Yep, it was Diego De Loya was the main event. <laughs> Roger Gutierrez was on the card, and that's where I first saw Camarón Cepeda. He's going to be fighting Jojo Diaz November 5th. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was. That's going to be a good lightweight clash. So that was a card that Golden Boy matchmaker Roberto Diaz put together, Mexico against Venezuela. Ah. And I'm looking at my notes now, and you're right. It was a fight that Baez was winning. And he got caught, and you're he's right. A good, he's a good boxer. He's, a, he's, he's, he's just, he, he's gonna be difficult for anybody because he's a southpaw, and he's fast, and he can punch. And he's got that swagger. Ah, oh. main event time. In Corona, California. The tension is still there with the crowd. Usually a Ruben Torres crowd is fired up, making noise, 
yelling stuff that we should be apologizing for on the broadcast. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> nah, not nah, today. They, they know their guy is in there with a threat. Oh, yeah. And the, uh, you know what? That's, that, that's the way it should be. This is the main event. This is a 10-round fight. Torres has a, a, a minor title. He's got a, one, of, one of the WBC's straps. Yeah. One of the, the youth belts. Okay. Hey, you know I'm noticing? I, I didn't see this before, but Ben Lira, the sage Yoda, <laughs> is in the corner of Ruben Torres. I like that. And in that round, it wasn't Danny Zamora talking. It was Ben Lira from outside the ropes talking. Good. Torres, I think, looking at the start of this round, just looks to be getting to back to boxing basics. Get his feet planted firmly, come forward, jab a lot, and let everything flow off the jab. Whereas Baez, Rich, it looks like he's just loading up every chance he can on that left. Well, he's emboldened by what he's been able to accomplish so far. He hurt Torres in the first round, he dropped him in the second round. Torres has to remember not to just stand in front of this guy. Give him angles if he's going to be aggressive and come forward. And if not, in the center of the ring, he needs to move. Rosa Payan checking in for Team Torres. Lee Jin, 408, go Christian. Relentless. Why do you guys keep putting relentless for him? He told me his nickname is El Spartano. So if uh, the Torres or the Bias crowd can let me know. I mean, he is relentless, no doubt. Ruben Ace Torres, 18 and 0, 16 KOs or 15 uh, KOs. Baez got that right hook in. Yep. Torres is going to have to keep a, keep his guard up, and Torres has got to be ready for his own counter punches. Ah, I got it. Okay. The, Relentless is the name of the gym. Where's the gym at okay. where Bias was training? Is that a San Jose gym? I tell you, this is the most interactive show you can work, baby. You got questions about a guy? We got the people watching. Relentless boxing in Santa Clara. All right, there That's it Santa is. Clara, okay. There it is. Appreciate everybody checking in, leaving the comments. Left hand as well, he's training in Santa Clara. Torres getting on top here, but the one thing he's got to be careful about is not getting reckless. He's, he's having some good moments in this round. He is, but he's also leaving himself open in spots. He's got to be careful about that. Can't forget it. He can't forget his jab. He just he's touch him on his way in. The taller fighter too. All right, shout out to all the relentless crew checking in. All right, now I'm asking another question. So how does a guy from Venezuela end up at Relentless Gym in San Jose, right behind Levi Stadium, actually in Santa Clara. You go a lot of places, Bridgeman. The Niners home? <laughs> I'm liking this, this lateral movement from Torres. Not just, he's not being stationary. He's boxing. You, yeah, you don't want to be stationary in front of a counter punch. Daniel um, Ochoa, saludos in Blythe, California, on the Arizona-California border. Baez was dropped by Golden Boy, and uh, that led to some of this inactivity that I, I don't know if they were still holding paper on him for hmm. a length of time, but. Yeah, it might, it might have just been the pandemic. Uh, now that was right before but the you know, ballet. Torres, he kept active during the pandemic. Well, that's because of Thompson Boxing. They got creative. They, they built a studio, right, in that uh, Omega Products International behind us. <laughs> we were Beto and I, we called the fight in, in, in July, I think, 2020. I think it was 110 degrees up in there. Yeah, we, we all made flyweight that day. <laughs> yes, we did. Oh, but boy. it was uh, where Thompson built, it was 3-2-1 boxing, where they built uh -huh. a ring literally right next to the stucco uh, here at Thompson Omega Products International in a way to keep their fighters active. They did. Yeah, so I think, I think Ruben fought three times that year. Coach Eric and Coach Arturo Quintero are Team Relentless. Shout out to them. We appreciate you interacting with us. Let us know. We're in the fifth round. Both fighters' gloves touch the canvas in the second. Back and forth. Action here. Our main event. 
We're done with four. What is Doug Fisher's unofficial scorecard? We'll get it for you right there. 38-37, huh, Doug? Yes. Yep, I, I scored the last two rounds for Torres. So he's pulled ahead, but just by one point. You see Baez trying to be a little more aggressive, a little more proactive. He's on his stock, he's on the hunt. We're gonna see if uh, Torres can, can punch and defend on the fly. Well, it's an immediate answer by Baez because I think Torres was, it, it felt like he was taking control in that last round. This from Julio Arroyo. Doug, if successful tonight, how many fights is Torres away from getting into the rankings? A fight or two. Just needs to fight like a name, somebody like, you know, a former champion or, you know, a, a, a respected veteran, you know, like a, a veteran fringe contender or something like that. But um, he's in good position. He's just outside of the top 10. We've had some new additions because guys are outgrowing uh, the 135 pound division. Teofimo Lopez moved up and, and moved out of the, the ring lightweight ranking. So guys like uh, Frank Martin and uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Michael Rivera have just come in uh -huh. at number, number nine and number 10. And I think Torres is right outside of that. And uh, you know, Ryan Garcia says he's not, He's not going to fight at 135 anymore. Nope. Well, if he if he stays true to his word and um, he stays at junior welterweight, then um, he'll move out of uh, the ring lightweight rankings, and we'll have room for uh, another new face. Editor in chief of Ring Magazine, Doug Fisher. The pace is definitely slow, and now there's more respect between the two. More boxing. Oh, oh nice big left, straight Trump. left. Wow. And Torres wore that. Yes, he did. I think he saw it coming. Just kind of stepped back just enough. Take some of the edge off that shot. But here's another one. Big shots again from Christian Baez. Baez is having a good round. I think Ruben's got to get some respect. The southpaw is Baez. You know, old, old timers say, you know, the kryptonite for, for a southpaw is, is, is a well-timed right hand. Well, he took that better than he did those big shots in the first and second round, but nonetheless, yeah. these are crisp, clean punches. Round Very five. easy for the judges to yes, see. Yes, round five belongs to Christian Baez. Solid round. That was a rough last minute for Ruben Torres. Yep. And, uh, shoe Shine Boxing, the soundtrack tonight, straight from Yo! MTV Raps. A little jock dance for you. We're taking you back to your prom, right? Yep, and the tension. The pro heavy Ruben Torres crowd as Ben Lira works on him. The outside Danny Zamora talking to him. Relentless for Christian Baez. He walked in with that Spartan helmet, fighting with that Spartan attitude. As we head to the sixth round, Beth the Grand, Doug Fisher, and Rich Murata squad here in the main event. A surprised Rich Murata because of the high esteem that I was holding Ruben Torres in. But tonight he is. I tell you, I, I, I do believe this is a crisis for him, and, you know, in the whole career, in his career. Baez is trying to take it. He's trying to take Torres' will. He's trying to take over this fight. And right now, it's anybody's fight. After five rounds, I've got it even, 47-47. All right, history time with the gentleman. Venezuela boxing. Immediately, what comes to mind, Rich Morata? There was a really good featherweight champion named Antonio Esparagosa. You remember him? He was out of Venezuela. And of course, the guy that that I think of is, is the late Edwin Valero, exactly. who was also a dynamic southpaw boxer puncher. Or maybe you should call him a puncher boxer, because Valero knocked out everybody he fought. Carac Caracas, Venezuela. Yeah. Uh, Baez slipped on that wet spot. And 
Baez, Venezuela, the reason I wanted to ask that out, because Valero, I knew be the name that comes up. Is that Car Car well, well, Jorge Linares. There you go. Jorge, and he's as worldly as any former champion, champion has ever been, you yep. know, born in Venezuela. Uh, he, he turned pro in Japan, yep. <laughs> was de developed in Japan, um, and made a name for himself in the U.S. and the U.K. Yeah, being around and Mexico. Yeah, being around YouTube, I've heard the name Valero, never saw him, but gone down a YouTube rabbit hole and just loading up on punches, and this is what... What a talent he was. Baez has done 18 and one, 17 KOs. He's dangerous. They're standing right in the middle where that wet spot is. Both fighters have slipped there. Yeah, and also Baez is slipping. I think with ba Baez's shoes are, are slippier or, or more slippery than uh, Ruben's. Oh, nice hook Left from hook uh, by Ruben. Yeah, and uh, somebody brings out, you know, Valerio was crazy as hell. Absolutely. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. He was. He was a madman. Did not end well for for Evan no. Valero or his family. Boy. He created some excitement, though, I'll oh tell you that. Oh, my God. Even before he, had, he fought on national television, he was creating excitement in Southern California just on his gym appearances, his sparring sessions. Boogeyman? Yeah, I mean, he's like a, like an urban legend, man. <laughs> before social media. Yes, exactly. You've heard about this guy who's right. crazy. And because of that, there's more of a mystique, you know? Well, the reason I brought up Caracas was when I was thinking, the Caracas caper was uh, George Foreman against uh, Kenny Norton. That's what they, that's where they oh. took out. Ken, took out Kenny in two rounds. I love working with you too. I always learn something new about it. That was a very odd era in heavyweight boxing. You had Foreman Norton there that you had. Uh, well, didn't Foreman win the title against Joe Frazier in Jamaica? Exactly. Right. <laughs> then he fought Joe King Roman in, in Japan. To yeah. In Tokyo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, it, he's the world champion. Why not? I assume the answer is Move because around. Cause Vegas showed up, right? Yeah. That's why they stopped going to these crazy places. Vegas had showed up before that, but then there were uh, also, but but then once it got to Vegas yeah. again, then. The 80s was... Yep, exactly. Okay, so Caesar's Palace showed up and forget yes. about it? Yeah. I mean, I would love to work a, a fight in Jamaica. Sure, or, why not? I mean, we're seeing that now where you're going to different locations and, you know, I love watching fights in Japan or the UK. Oh, man. Ali's last fight was in the Bahamas with uh, yes, Trevor Burbrick. Yeah. The trauma in the Bahamas. <laughs> because I want to work those fights with a name like that. Yeah. <laughs> like today was uh, was something, Rumble in the Red Sea or something? Yeah, something like that. Well, that was too worried for me. Yeah. In the meantime, we have kind of a shocker here tonight. Although Christian Reyes was well respected off of his, based off his record, he still had not fought in two years, and he was still coming off a knockout defeat. Yeah, but I found that um, fighters, serious fighters, are, are very dangerous coming off of a loss. Because if they're, if they're serious about boxing, um, that loss just emboldens them. It just makes them work harder. Whatever they didn't do right going into that loss, they're going to correct that going into the next right. fight. All right, Gail corrects me. Rage on the Red Sea. All right. Rage on the Red Sea. Uh, like Red they River tried. rivalry. Okay. Yeah, they tried. Seventh round of action. If you just join us right now. Hey, we're working towards midnight. <laughs> Thompson Boxing put it on show. Six fights only. All of them have gone the distance so far, except for one, and Eduardo Reyes was stopped by Nelson Nelson. And every fight's been evenly matched back and forth action. Yeah. Fighters learning about themselves. Young fighters learning what they got left in the tank. What Torres. Torres. Yes. Yes. Ruben Torres. That's a knockdown. And Fire is saying that the feet were tangled up. We'll get yeah. you a replay. Maybe, but he but went he, down on that punch. But he, he felt he tripped. He felt he tripped, but he was. Oh! Oh, oh my, my God! God! Oh my goodness! Ruben Torres! What was Ooh. that? Knock it oh. out! Fires! Holy smokes! Wow! Wow! That's some Jack Dempsey stuff right there. That was ruthless. That was ruthless. Oh my God! That's one of the shortest snap hooks I've ever seen. 
Wow! They came together, they touched <laughs> gloves, and Torres checked them. That was some Jack Dempsey stuff right there. Oh my God. We're keeping a close eye on Baez. He was really tagged, but with one shot like that, it's not, he hasn't taken a sustained beating over a lot of time. But he hit his head very hard. Oh, well, when he fell down, yeah, yeah. Did they, have they removed his mouthpiece? Yes, they did. Okay, that, that's good, he needs to get oxygen. The doctor is right there, and the doctor is telling him to stay down, and now they're gonna have him sit up. Wow. Yeah, Baez is, yeah, he's, he's, still, he's still out of oh, it. He they touched gloves, and then Torres checked them. Wow. We'll get you the replay as Baez is on his stool. Look at the That's replay too, here. Too soon, yeah, too soon. This is after Baez was ruled a knockdown. Oh. oh. Baez was still complaining to the ref. You know, protect it, it yourself at all times. They, they, they were touching gloves, yeah. like, you know, so he was not oh, protecting geez. himself. No. Now, he was still kind of peeved about that knockdown call. My goodness. Woo. We'll be back with more here. Thompson Boxing in Corona. Paving the way to your personal sanctuary that you simply can't stop thinking about. Find yours at bellguard.com. the world's largest compatible cordless system. Makita's LXT batteries take you from power tools to outdoor power equipment. The blower delivers power comparable to a 24cc gas model. From the job site to your home, reach speeds of 116 miles per hour. Use Makita's cordless products anytime, anywhere. One system, endless possibilities. Now get two extra free batteries. You're at this table. You know that it's more than a game of luck. You're not here for the small talk. You're here for the action. If you're at this table, you're a hustler. Hustler Casino. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the end comes. One minute, 53 seconds of round number seven. Referee Thomas Taylor puts a stop to this contest, declaring your winner by way of a knockout. 
And still undefeated, Ruben Ace Tony. Ruben Torres, the victory. Uh, so, the end, we will get you the replay. There will be an interview with Ruben in the ring. He had to work, it was back and forth. All right, I'll start with you, Rich Morata. They touch gloves. And we'll, we'll go through this here on the replay. And it was a different vibe the entire night for the whole night. And this replay brought to you by Hustler Casino. This is after he was dropped. Right, now they'll come out. He's still they complaining. They're going to touch gloves, but Torres takes advantage at that very moment. I think there's going to be some complaints about this. Sure. All right, now the question I'm asking. Oh, is it ruthless. All right, I'm asking the question here. Is it legal? I think I it think is it's legal. Legal, it's, but not it's necessarily not, sports. It's not sporting, right? There's some. Uh, All right, so it's ruthless in terms of ethics, you know. But you got to protect yourself at all times. He got up from the knockdown. Referee checked him. Okay. They resumed the fight. They touched gloves. You got to be ready. We saw he this was once he was his attention was still Baez was still complaining about what he thought was a questionable knockdown off that right hand. All right, I just talked to referee Tom Taylor. I said, well, "Tom, what happened?" He said, "I cleared them." Yep. I said, "Box, you have to protect yourself at all times." Protect yourself Warwick's at all Tom times. Taylor, yep. Right there, Jessica Rosales in the ring with Ruben Torres. All right, you guys, we got Ruben Ace Torres here, and of course, that is. The toughest fight that we have seen you in, those first two rounds, you were in situations that we'd never seen before. Let's talk through those first two rounds, and obviously a fight like this, you told me you needed it. Tell me why. Uh, well, it's obvious. We got some sharpening up to do. You know, um, to go in there, your confidence is all the way up here, and then he starts touching you, he touched the canvas. You're like, oh, man, I got some work to do, for real. But nonetheless, we put off the victory. Um, like I said, it's back to the drawing board. It's behind us now. We're still undefeated, still coming. We just got to get sharper and come back harder. And let's go through the end of the fight and how that ended. I also saw you over here in the ring. You did go over and talk to your opponent. Tell us what you said to him, and, you know, let's talk through the way this fight ended. It's the number one rule in boxing, but set itself at all times. Um, I had dropped him in the first, first half of the fight. Um, I noticed he wasn't hurt, so he was going to sit there and try to complain with me that it wasn't a knockdown. When they got counted a knockdown, that's none of my business. I'm here to fight. I threw a punch, and that was all she wrote. And so what did you say to him after the fight? I just told him, hey, man, it's boxing, you know? Keep your hands up. I'm not going to sit there and argue with you. Much credit to you. It was a tough fight. Look at my face, bro. I saw you. He speaks Spanish, so I call him a cabron and shit, but... I mean, this is no disrespect, you know, it's boxing at the end of the day. I got to do what I got to do, but most definitely not my best performance. But thank you to everybody who pulled up, all the family, all my friends out here in Corona. It was much love. We definitely felt the love tonight. Okay, so now you said you got to go back to that drawing board. What is the next step for you once you guys figure out that plan? What do you want to see? What types of fights coming up next? I would love to get back in there um, maybe by the end of this year. Uh, well, for sure by the end of this year, we'll see how it goes, but I got 100% faith in my team, how they move me, I love it. Uh, like I said, we got the job done tonight, so we just keep climbing towards that world title. Sounds good, congratulations on the win. Give it up one more time, Ruben Ace Torres. Back here at ringside, Beth Duran, Doug Fisher, and Rich Murata. Ruben Torres, Rich, I'm going to start with you. Uh, he said it was legal. Protect your hands at all times. The referee said it. It, it. It's just a weird way it ended, yeah. but it was a knockout. I think that Ruben was going to win the fight, and I think he was on his way once again to win the fight. I thought he pretty much started to take control. He had just scored that knockdown previous. Thing is, I still hate to see a fight finish like that. Yeah, Such a good know, fight that we had going on. You know, we had a, we had a real good fight going, and there, I think there's going to be some complaints and some controversy Absolutely. over that. We saw it once before with Floyd Mayweather and uh, Ortiz. Yeah. You know, it was almost the same kind yeah. of kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth. You know, not sportsmanlike, right? Yeah. But uh, I, I think Ruben. Uh, you know, I had to answer some questions tonight. He did. He, came, he did come through the crisis that we were talking about because he was hurt badly in the first round. He was dropped in the second round. So he had to come back from that, and uh, he was able to do that. I agree with you. I thought he he was figuring out a very difficult style. 
and the round where he scored the knockdowns and ultimately the knockout, um, before he scored the first knockdown, I thought he was figuring some things out, technically spe speaking. But I like what he said to Jessica Rosales. He, he, he recognizes and acknowledges that he still has some work to do. He still has some learning to do. Um, and he acknowledges that it, it wasn't his best fight. But I, I, li I like what he had to say. He wants to get right back in that ring. Yeah, six good fights tonight. Ruben Torres with a knockout to end the night. The guy going really well, so a lot of prospects showed some fight. Knuckle Nelson, check him out. Henry Ramirez training him out in Riverside. Kid, 4-0, 4 KOs, and he's got to work tomorrow for the Carpenters <laughs> Union. So Ten you really got to work your way through it. So for everybody watching us around the world, we appreciate you leaving all the comments on social media. Thank you so much. Rich Murata, thank you for coming. Oh, I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. I love it. No, it's Doug always Fisher, an honor. Always the pleasure, man. Honor with both of you guys. Oh, yeah, let's go, man. Let's go. All right, so for everybody behind the scenes, camera, audio, visual, graphic, social media, for uh, Alex Caponovo, Jeanette Gonzalez, Paul LaFornia, Joe Pahar, my partners, Rich Murata and Doug Fisher, I'm Beth Duran. Make sure you download the Thompson Boxing app. Make sure you follow on social media. Oh, I can't forget, of course, Jessica Rosales did a great job in the ring. Well, great job today. So for everybody behind the scenes, thank you so much. Good night from Omega Products International. Thompson Boxing is 22nd year of business. When's the next fight? In September. Where? Double Tree Hotel in Ontario. Download the Thompson Boxing app for all the details. Good night, everybody.